No more, no more. Those are the ones I'm going with today. That was great. Loved it. Loved the Resident Evil jump scares. <laughs> I could have done a whole video on that shit. I really could. Yeah, I have, I have so many of those too that I've clipped. <laughs> I got them in Resident Evil. I, I got them all over the place. Mm -hmm. I could do a compilation of me screaming like a girl to uh, Resident Evil jump scares. Hi everyone, I'm Az Hill versus Babyface, bringing you a special stream today. Mac and Cheese, she's the Mac and the Cheese, and uh, a stream that is literally months in the making. Uh, we've been planning to do this since probably around February, maybe yes. even sooner. Um, but for one reason or another, things just got you know pushed. It's the way things happen, folks. So. <laughs> Uh, I am double booked for today, but I've had to say no to uh, Star Wars Court. I might appear on Star Wars Court at a later date. I might just put in a, a, a recording for you. But Mel and I, because uh, Mel is legit gamma. You are yes. legit gamma. And uh, I, I rarely get to play with or talk to legit gammas. I get Gary. <laughs> He's the the golem pro though. Yeah, he's you know he's he's the father of gaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> emphasis on emphasis on father. Just, just saying. <laughs> uh, so I I kind of approached you a few months back and said, hey, do you wanna do you wanna talk about our personal mm -hmm. top top ten favorite games of yes. all time? Even though we've put a gazillion caveats and asterisks after that. So that we have a variety of games mm -hmm. to 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 talk about, but I don't know your list, right? And I don't know yours, and you don't know my list. I'm willing to bet there's a there's a Tomb Raider on there. <laughs> Maybe, Who knows? possibly. Who knows? This list was so difficult for me because it's like it's so hard to narrow it down to ten. It's like there's some that I really wanted to squeeze in there, but I'm like, well, I think I think this is it. I don't think I can move around this list anymore well i mean uh just before we started i said this is this is total sequel bait stream as well mm -hmm. uh because we could have come up with a ton more if we if we really wanted to but i thought yeah. i'd you know we'd go i'd go with 10 10 some of there's some lot of mainstream stuff in there but there's a couple in there that people might be like oh and i actually put next to my choices what what format they came out on, what console they came out oh, on. Oh, okay. And uh, I was amazed at, at how we, a lot of them came across as PS1, mm -hmm. PS2, Dreamcast. Uh, and I think there's, uh, there's only a couple of 360s in there. I think okay. there's one that you could, you could say has come out on, on PC. Mm -hmm. So it, like a lot of it is like older, older stuff, which... Um, I don't a know lot if of that mine's is telling. Mm. Yeah, mm. mine's like mostly like PS2, PS1 era. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get yep. it. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, yeah. I think I have like one relatively new game in there. That's it. All the other ones are older. Yeah, there's one that I can say you can take the current version of it if you want. Right. But technically speaking, I'm talking about the OG here. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, Cause there wouldn't have been another version of it if there wasn't for the OG. True. Yeah. You know, you gotta, you gotta understand and appreciate these things. <laughs> uh, so are we gonna, uh, audience, as ever, you can play along too. Yeah. I mean, we, we are desperate for you to wor use words like, you forgot. <laughs> and why didn't you say? 
And why isn't this on your list? We're we're so excited for that. But these Can't are wait. our personal, our personals, and they might not even be our top ten. They might just be ten games. Uh, <laughs> but uh, ladies first. So I'll go. No, uh, ladies first. We'll go with the Mac. Okay. Do you want to go with your number ten on your list? Yes. So for number ten, I picked SSX Tricky. Oh. Okay. I don't know if you've ever played any of those games, but yeah, I yeah, yeah. used to like back in the day, EA Big made like the coolest extreme sports games. I loved them. And SSX Tricky was just my favorite. I put so much time into it. The characters are incredible. Uh, and it was just a fun time back when gaming was, it, it didn't take itself too seriously. Uh, so I love that. I love just being able to pull off the tricks, have fun. It was zany. It was wacky. The characters, just iconic. Amazing soundtrack. Just so good. Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, that's funny you said that. I was hooked on SSX3. Okay, SSX3 was great as well. But Tricky for me was the best. Mm. The best. Yeah, I, just, uh, I, I think I had uh, recently got a PS1. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're just looking. You're looking for those games which are. Uh, I didn't have a lot of money, right? So at that time, so I, I'm looking for a game that I could sink time into. I think that's why I became a massive RPG fan because I couldn't afford. Oh, for sure. I couldn't afford a lot of games. So you get an RPG, yep. and it lasts you. It lasts you ages, and that's exactly. sort of how that came about. So yeah, SSX3 though, it just had that hook. It did. Um, and I think the reason why I got into SSX3 is because I really enjoyed the mini game. In Final Fantasy VII, mm -hmm. when you go to the, when you're doing the snowboarding, right, uh, and you're trying to beat the time, yeah, so mm -hmm. I I used to really push that game to the nth degree to get that time shaved off, and then it's like, oh wait a minute, they're doing this snowboard game. Oh yeah, okay, let's, let's yeah. do that. And well, man, during the older days, then our old like we're I feel like we're old. Um, <laughs> mm. so, <laughs> Extreme yes. sports were like popular, so yes. we saw a lot of like skateboarding snowboarding even like four-wheeler game atv yeah 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 all that kind of stuff it was fun you had your tony hawk you had mm -hmm. your bmx you know you had and then of course you had your, your ssx series was massive oh it was uh, it's absolutely huge at the time so yeah you'd have your extreme sports doing all that mm. i even it's so weird because i even remember i can't remember which i think it was a tony hawk's game Mm -hmm. You could you could use the PlayStation Eye and map your face. Oh yeah, I think that was incredibly badly. Okay. Yeah, on, onto <laughs> onto a character, and I'm just like, yep. why aren't we there today? I know, I know. Why aren't I we just... mapping our faces onto heroes? And and we, you know, you can have your hero story, but mm -hmm. then maybe if you complete the game, it says you can now map your face or a right. face. <laughs> Or a picture <laughs> ah, onto the character and uh, and go again. That would be amazing. But yeah, I, I, that that genre seems to have dropped dropped dead. Really, it has because games are so focused on just being grounded and realistic now. So they're not as over the top and fun. You can't do all these crazy stuff because whenever they did try to make a fairly recent SSX game, it just seemed too realistic compared to the past yeah, yeah. games it just didn't it wasn't the same and even with the tony hawk uh remaster or remakes or whatever it just doesn't have the heart that the older ones did mm -hmm. i tried playing the new like the tony hawk remakes and i mean they're not bad but it just made me go back and play the older ones because yeah. they're just they just have much more of a charm and they're just i like the style of it uh and about I, a gameplay loop you just have a better gameplay loop. Right, yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're really missing that in a lot of modern games now. Boo. Boo hits. Ah, oh, that's a good one, though. Tricky, that's a good one, man. Yeah, thank you. I like that. Uh, I've gone with a really, really bizarre number 10. Okay. Uh, I've gone with uh, Ico. Ico! On the uh, On the PS2. Um, now, I, I, as somebody who was a... Uh, a big like big rpg fan big action mm -hmm. adventure fan uh we suddenly sort of had this this very stylized cell shaded or what would become which became a huge trend later on oh yeah uh game which didn't really involve combat mm -hmm. per se it, it really involved uh just trying to lead somebody and i know people 
a lot of people go, oh, can I escort missions? Right. But, but it was just done in such an incredible way. Mm -hmm. But you have this 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 dude, this little boy with his little horned helmet called Ico, dragging the princess through this castle, through all these great platforming platforming ventures, and it's all in three D as well. Yep. And she couldn't get too far away from you. She got too far away from you, then she'd be dragged into the into the void. Uh, and it was just such a beautifully constructed game. And the what really got me was the animations. Oh yeah! Just all the animations of the characters, all the way that the fluidity of how they moved, uh, how they just progressed through the levels, the 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 wonderful platforming mm -hmm. puzzles that you had to uh, they had to solve, and of course, Ico then uh, spawned Shadow of the Colossus, yes, which a lot more people legendary, sort of, yeah, game. yeah, a lot more people are like, ah. But I don't want to get Shadow ahead of, Colossus, of myself on yeah. my list. There, there's a little spoiler. <laughs> Uh -oh. oh my god! <laughs> but, it, but, but wouldn't that be weird though? If I I had the, I had the game that created it, and then you you possibly had the oh. game which which followed. I don't know. Oh, Who knows? Uh oh, stay Who tuned, you guys. Knows. Uh, but yeah, I, Ico for me was just one of those. I don't think we've really had a game like it since. Right. I don't um, think so either. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's just one of those one of those special moment in time games, I, I would say. Oh, absolutely. I agree. Uh chat, while we've got your attention and while you're all saying, why isn't it this? Uh <laughs> let, let's see if I can let's see if I can see a few few uh gams in the chat here. Um have we just announced any entries? Yes. Total Warhammer three, Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger at number 10? Okay. Oh, interesting. Um, I saw Kingdom yeah. Hearts on there as well. Fear Effect. I, I got, okay. I got, I just recently got those. Fear Effect one and two from my collection over there. Mm -hmm. Spyro, Year of the Dragon, Ico the Dolphin, Eco, Echo, Echo the Echo Dolphin, the <laughs> Echo the Dolphin, not Ico the Dolphin. Come on, man. Um, <laughs> mount your friends, not if you want them to stay friends. <laughs> Jackson Daxter. Okay, Shadow the Colossus. Interesting. Mm. Uh, Armored Core. Icor. Icor. Okay, that's that's Ooh. a deep cut. That's a deep cut. That's a deep cut. That's a Conan, <laughs> Conan Exiles cut there. Splinter oh, I Cell. Mm -hmm. Iconic. Mm. Iconic, iconic. Uh, and while we've got people, let's see, let's see. Uh, Kimberly Moore became a sorcerer. Bacon's all mine. Sorcerer for all nine. Right. And Brass Monkey gifting five memberships to the stream. Brass Monkey, thank you. John Barton has become a sorcerer. Ruddy Gore has been a bard for nine. As is Wonky Eyebrow. Goddamn right. <laughs> uh, with a two pound says no Ocean Man today. Disappointed. Hi Mel. Hi. Ocean Man Sundays only. Sundays only because that's. The <laughs> That's the demonetization song. Uh, Johnny Yarball with a $2. Ooh, Beardo is going to be jealous. Lol. Uh, DB with a two pound. I don't get all that. These geeks and gamers memes. I don't get them. Uh, <laughs> all the 199 stuff. I don't get it. DB it's with a, a two pound. <laughs> yes, there's a lot going on over there. This is an awesome combo. Regular thing. Well, there, there may be sequels. You never know. Oh, yeah. You know, maybe sequels. Maybe next time, Melanie's channel. You know? That's right. We'll you make know. it happen. Uh, got to pay it forward. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh Knight with a sorcerer for eight firm handshakes, my brother, and to a fellow Texan, the Mac. Much yes. love. Thank you. Uh, objectively, a cat has been a bard for a month. Thank you. Uh, Tiss with a two dollar says predicting that as his number one would be Gollum. <laughs> Spoiler like Spoiler alert. Reading me like wow. a book. Luis Cavas with a five dollar says the return of the Mac. Yes, it is. Japanese Demon Lord with a ten dollar says most folks' intro into multiplayer was Goldeneye. Uh, mine was a land at land parties with Doom Two. Oh, congrats on the weight loss! As it's, uh, it's a work in progress. Um, amazing. Lamp. Oh yeah, lamp. I used to have Unreal land parties. We and we we would have yeah we'd have a lot of Unreal tournament land parties. They were mm -hmm. they were great stuff. 
Uh, objectively, a cat with a five dollar. My list is Bioshock, Dark Souls Three, Somna, Fallout New Vegas, Doom Eternal, A Hat in Time, Cuphead, Europa Universalis uh, Four, Banjo Kazooie, Ocarina of Time. Oh, there's some interesting ones in there. Uh, Will That's Plodiger good. with a bard for ten, and uh, Grumpy Dad reacts to the ten dollars. Says Fantasy Star series on the Sega Genesis. Hmm, will we see a fantasy star game on my list? Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Robin J. Saylor with a $10 says, Quake, uh, Sunset Overdrive. Sunset Overdrive, great game. Uh, Dig Dog, uh, Angelina Richter with a $5 says, Love you as, and hey to Melanie, an Hi. RX firm has become a bard. Thank you. Nice. Now, let's get to our number nine. Nine, nine. All uh, right. Melanie, where are we going with number nine? Number nine for me is Final Fantasy X. Oh! Yes. I know for a lot of people, it's like seven is their favorite. But at ten, I just have amazing memories playing Final Fantasy X with my brothers. Mm -hmm. So fun. And the characters, love, love, love the characters. That's a, that's a big theme for me with games. Oh, is yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Final Fantasy X is the second best characters in any Final Fantasy game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Final Fantasy amazing. VII has the best characters. Mm -hmm. We might have some overlap here. Okay. Interesting. We, got, we have some overlap because I do have Final <laughs> Fantasy X on the list. I love it. Uh, but I have Final Fantasy X at my number... Number six. Number six. Okay. Who's your favorite character in Final Fantasy X? Yuna. Yuna. Okay, she's yeah. amazing. Yuna, uh, Yuna's, I love her story. She's just got such yeah. a, a great story, and you don't see the full picture at the start. You think For it's sure. a very celebratory story. Mm -hmm. She's off to sing the prayer, to yep. to to cast sin away, mm -hmm. uh, you know, give a hundred years of prosperity or whatever it is, you know, ten years, whatever. I can't ten or hundred. Can't remember right. which. I think it's ten actually uh and and you think it's oh it's this wonderful sort of weird the procession to to do it uh but then of course you know takes this this twist where mm -hmm. you realize that they they had to sacrifice themselves in order yep. to do this so these these priestesses whatever you want to call them they are mm -hmm. sacrificial lambs uh yeah. for the dispersal of sin mm -hmm. um and and yeah she's she's like such this this brave strong character at the beginning and she kind of breaks down a bit as, as oh, she yeah. she falls in love with uh, titus and mm -hmm. uh realizes that you know i could have so much more but i'm yep. doing something for the greater good and and they they had they had complexity to a character and and uh when titus of course discovers all that's going on and of course sin is jacked jacked is yep. titus his father um you you get you get such a such an incredible conflict so yeah yuna yuna i think has the, the most incredible arc in that game i love her my favorite though is riku she's just okay yeah yeah so yeah. bubbly so fun but she's you're... you you're riku <laughs> that's i'd like to think that <laughs> <laughs> but here's the big question though is what did you think of 10 2 did you play it oh i loved it I'm good so right. i loved it too yeah it, 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 i actually have two copies in my Peter Pan Studios. One is opened mm -hmm. to play, and I have a sealed copy of Final Fantasy X-2 as well. Nice. Uh, I know a lot. I've, I've actually tweeted out, in mm -hmm. the recent in the recent future, in the recent past, uh, that I, I don't care. I, I came out as a Final Fantasy X-2 lover, and I'm not, I'm not ashamed. I, don't I love be it. ashamed. It's not amazing. At all. Not at all. <laughs> I'm actually mortified Good. they never did the Ten Three with Rico. Uh, Right, she was being set up to be the the heroine for ten three. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the thing is, my only complaint about ten two is ten made me cry like a baby at the end, and so I felt like ten two kind of made me cry for no reason. So okay, well, <laughs> it's like I, oh, I, that kind of <laughs> kind of okay. changes things. I but... cried at the end of ten. <laughs> yeah, how can you not? To me, it's like, are you human if you don't cry at the end of ten? What is it? I mean, uh, uh, I, I, admittedly, it went for those heartstrings. Yeah. With this, this, the way that the story was put together, it, it really went for those heartstrings. And mm -hmm. it's it's sort of, 
it sort of baits you in a way because you, you, you're sort of getting hints throughout the story that Oren is dead. Yep. Oren is actually dead and, and Oren is refusing to go into the Fade until he makes sure that Yuna gets to, to cast away Sin. So you do have these, these hints, you know, he refuses right. to go into the Fade when they arrive there, you know, he's sort of, ah, when, when they get there. So you're sort of beginning to appreciate that Oren died 10 years ago mm -hmm. uh, when he was um, taking Yuna's father to, to, uh, to cast out Sin. And uh, as it kind of goes on, you're focused on that, but then you realize, oh shit, Titus is actually, well, I don't know quite what you would call him, a dream. Right. He's, he's always, he's a projected, almost like a projective image from a thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. He doesn't exist. Yep. He doesn't exist in that time. It's, it's like the fade has constructed him in this time uh, to help uh, take Yuna. But after that, his, his dream's over. Yeah. And he must also, just like Oren, he has to, he has to, to return to the fade. And I so never, when you. Yeah, I on, never so, even fully understood the story with Ten Two and how he was able to come back, like I never was able to make sense of it. Maybe you know better than I do. <laughs> it is. I mean, it is quite complex. The way that I understood it mm -hmm. is, it was the the fates or the fairy, whatever you wanted to call them, mm -hmm. that brought Tidus back because Tidus was was Jack's son. Right. Okay. So they were the ones who brought them him into the current day to to help Yuna cast out Jack. Okay. Uh, and, and, and defeat Sin. But in doing so, they actually gave him life for a moment. Oh. They gave him life in the current world. So mm -hmm. unlike Oren, he could exist in the Fade because he technically had life. Uh, so in 10-2, it was... Because it, as you... As, at the end of 10, of course, all the Fates sort of die mm -hmm. and, 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 and dissolve because they're okay. sort of used up all they can. But if you if you conducted certain rituals, then you could allow that that life to become permanent. Oh. So Yuna's Yuna's connection to Titus, connection to the fate, connection to sin, mm -hmm. uh, allowed allowed him to literally live again. Okay. Because of because of the connective elements of that, and so you would have to intend to you ha at certain moments in the story if you wanted to bring Titus back at the end. Because mm -hmm. there were two endings. There was the ending, and then there was the real. I didn't ending. even know there was two endings. I just got. Yeah. I got the ending when he came back. I didn't know that he could could not come oh, back. Oh yeah, you, like when you're in the fate and you got to do the whistle. If you don't do the whistle, you're not bringing. You know, Ooh. if you don't do certain things, you're not bringing Titus back. I brought him back. I, I'll look. Yeah, look at me. yeah. So you you, got me. you no, did the good thing. I did the good. I got the good. You did ending. the good thing. <laughs> All right. Otherwise, you just get the airship ending, and she's just like, oh, I'm just gonna be like. I'm going to live. And that's it. Over. Wow. That changes everything. I did not even know that. Yeah. You have to wow. before you have to conduct certain things to get tight. And then you get the Titus. So she does these things, which, which re start to reconnect Titus to, to reality. Mm -hmm. And and then doing that allows Titus to become alive at the end. And then she can. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm proud of myself for getting the good ending. Yes. <laughs> I think I had to, because I really wanted Titus back. Because mm -hmm. I heard, I heard there was a seat. There's a secret ending that you can get Titus back. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I got the guide. I got the guide to make sure that I got Titus back. Wow. So yeah, I didn't have a guide or nothing. I just was just playing it, and I just, I guess, I just somehow managed on so my own. When you're in the fade or that that flowered area, if you move to a certain place, it says whistle. You get a prompt that says mm -hmm. whistle. So you must have got the prompt and hit that yeah, whistle prompt. I just did it. <laughs> because remember, they do the bit in 10 where the, the whistling, yep. if, if, you, if we ever get yep. split, if we ever get parted, whistle. Mm -hmm. And we can have a little bit of a longer chat because obviously we're not going to have another chat about this when it's moment number six. So right, okay. exactly. So, so, so you perform the whistle in 10-2 mm -hmm. that, you, that you agree to in, you know, when you're away. If you, if you, so she's like, you've left me. Mm -hmm. She's whistling for Titus to return. Of course, he doesn't return then, so she's doing right. the, the certain things. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, well done. I love it. I love that. 
You did a thing. <laughs> I did the thing. My only complaint about 10 2, well, I say my only, my only com real complaint about 10 2 is I don't think pain was particularly fleshed out. I loved her though. Did oh you? my gosh. But back then it was like the emo stuff was a lot more popular. And, and sure. so she, she had that look and I, I was obsessed with her look. I mean, Riku was still my favorite, but I loved pain. I do agree that they could have fleshed her personality out a bit more. Um, but I was, I was a pain fan. No, I get, I get that. I could, I can get that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I uh, ten two great game. I love it. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no good. Here. Love it. You have good taste. All right. <laughs> well, we'll we'll see. <laughs> <Later on. laughs> we'll see. We'll find Later out. On the list. Uh, so my number nine. Oh, I enjoyed that. Is uh, two rated two. Oh yeah. I uh, love seeing some Tomb Raider on the list. Okay, I two. I, you know, uh, this is my one. You know, one get one game from each franchise. So there's no, you know, the more okay. no more. So but, this is uh, so Tomb Raider Two is your favorite Tomb Raider game. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The first one is great. Love the first one. The mm -hmm. first one really sets up Lara Croft. Right. But the second one is one of those beautiful games where it's just like, how can we tighten everything up? Right. And expand on it in a way. That's really going to enhance the the gameplay, the audience, the character, and ten. I think uh, Two Ready Two just nailed that. It was amazing. absolutely nailed it graphically. It was a lovely little graphical upgrade on Lara. That was, yep. You know the two, the ponytail came into full effect instead of like a bun. There's almost like a bun yeah, exactly. in the first one. You get to see the full yeah, braid yeah. down. So you had the braid, and it was mm -hmm. you know it flowed between the shoulders, which at the time you know something like that at the time was actually really kind it of cool. It was a big stuff. deal. Yeah. But the gameplay on it was just taken to another level. It, it was just so well done, and the environments were so so well constructed. From from all the the modern day stuff to the tombs itself, mm -hmm. uh, and then they just they just tightened every aspect. The combat aspect tightened up. Uh, it, the the yeah. running, jumping, grabbing, diving, that everything just got absolutely nailed. And I think yeah, yep. you could do some more stuff like the uh, backwards twisty flip. Um, the, so that mm. was an added like mechanic there. Um, it definitely felt a lot more like Lara felt a lot more like an action heroine yes. in that game like okay like she's she's got the arsenal she's got the guns you 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 have a lot more opportunities to use them tomb raider one you can really get through the game pretty easily without it with very minimal combat even and yeah. so tomb raider 2 really upped that action factor um and it really gave lara more of a i mean the first one was was more about the adventure and then the second one mm. there was definitely a lot of adventure to it but it was just like okay she's tough as nails she can hold her own she can fight <laughs> so it really they, took they, went, to the they went really level. well with the the collectibles and everything to, to oh yeah really explore the levels and you and you definitely went out there the uh, dragons you wanted, yeah you wanted to get those dragons those jade jagger dragons and stuff and and they some of the best levels in all of tomb raider are in tomb raider 2 um venice iconic everybody mm, remembers yes. that everybody 100 100 yeah. that's yeah the i can remember being in the opera house you know or the theater whichever it was yeah uh, that was just oh man really i can good. remember that's going through scary. yeah it's yeah, a scary yeah. level <laughs> at the time you just like oh man how it, 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 yeah level design is so important oh yeah and then if you when you say you don't notice it when you're sort of just like doing all these great weird things then at the end of it it's just like holy shit mm -hmm. that was actually really clever the way that i had yep. to do this to do to that to do to that and it had yeah it had some of the best level design i've, I've seen in in Oh, heck of a long time. Yeah, in Barkang Monastery, that is my all-time <coughs> favorite Tomb Raider level in general. So that's like mm. where you're there with the monks and like the prayer wheels you have to collect. It's just like this elaborate uh, water water puzzle prayer yeah. wheel thing going on there. Um, and I really liked how the monks, if you shoot them, then they're you aggro them and they fight you the whole the the whole time you're in those levels. But if you don't. Then they're peaceful and they won't bother you. Mm, so mm. <laughs> I liked that too. But it's Lara, and you know. Oh yeah, of course you got to shoot the monks. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, she, she got to go <laughs> down, you know. <laughs> this is the. I mean, Lara used to be. She was such a better character in the in the PS1 games than she, than she became. She um, really was. They've 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 tried so hard to take. I mean. Tomb Raider was just fundamentally. You're playing as a grave robber. You're playing as this woman who is 
uh, almost psychopathic in a lot of ways. And she is just completely fueled on her own thrill of just this adrenaline rush. And she lived for it. She loved it. That consumed her life, not personal relationships or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yep. And so they've taken that kind of character who is an anti-hero in a way and tried to mold her into that modern day, oh, she has to be good. We can't have a female character who's bad. So she has to be good. Now she's all about restoring artifacts. She's all about bringing them to their rightful owners and helping people and saving people and trying to be a savior. And they completely lost the plot. Or, or And also with the whole family drama, all that. The, the original titles they made her parents disown her and you didn't have to worry about any family baggage any drama mm. all of the loose ends anything that would hold her back from her adventures were out of the picture and so completely changing that just kills a tomb raider for me yeah we we had a chat i think maybe on fnt once not mm -hmm. this recent one i think the one you were in before right where we were talking about femme fatales and we're talking about bad girls Mm -hmm. And and Lara Croft is much more akin to Catwoman, Ada yep. Wong, than yep. she is to a hero. Exactly. Way, way more akin to that. She mm -hmm. she has her own objectives, she has her own motivations. Yep. Uh she's she's not morally tied mm -hmm. to these artifacts need to go here or there. No, she's yeah. not even she's not even Indiana Jones. The, these belong exactly. in a museum. Exactly. Yeah, these belong in a museum. Her museum. Yep. <laughs> These her belong in my manor in my yes, museum in my exactly. house. Exactly. <laughs> That's where they belong for her. She she was uh she wasn't evil. No, but she uh, was but just but it is, you know, but she yeah, she was just self-motivated. I mean, uh, so and and we kind of missed those those edgier characters mm -hmm. uh which used to exist. Yeah. Uh but no longer for some reason. Mhm. Mm <laughs> Yeah, I should have there. You go. I should have done my number ten. There you go. My number there nine. You go. There. <laughs> uh, so let's just let's just jump back to the chat. Let's just catch up with them quickly. Okay. Let's see what else they're getting on with. Uh, oh, blimey, Charlie. Chat, you have been busy. Uh, yes, Foxhound. Oh, I bet uh, Metal Gear might be one of yours then. Uh, with <laughs> a two pound says, is that Phoebe Waller Bridge behind you, uh, Mac? Wow. Oh, do not disrespect. Do not disrespect. Wow. Her why do you have to be? Why why you like that? Why are you like that? Shape maker with a nine-month bard. Thank you. Uh Ion So Headass with a one-month sorceress has got to say Saints Road 2, Mafia 2. Don't get enough attention. Much love as and Melanie. Thank you. Uh Andrew Matthews, two dollars says, loving the butter girl. Yay. Does she know peeping Tom? She don't want to know peeping Tom. <laughs> Although she might know he's plushy when it comes out. Okay. Uh, Eddie A with the five dollars is not sure if any of your lists, but Legend of Dragoon, Ooh. great game. Shout out to Final Fantasy X. Uh, I just nice. bought. I mean, I do have the PS One Legend of Dragoon uh, here. It's alphabetical that, so it's about there mm -hmm. uh, in a nice protective case, and um, it recently came out on the PlayStation Store. So I did purchase it on the PlayStation 5 store and I'm currently playing that whenever I get some some free time. And yeah, it's it's great. Uh is uh, Legend of Gadoon. I love it. Not on this list though, I'll tell you that. Not on this list. Sequel bait people. Mm -hmm. Uh Blazing the Phoenix has been a Witcher for 6 as Final Fantasy 10 was one of the first games I got from my eldest brother. Ooh. I still play it today. Great game. And one that sticks with you. Hail to the both of you. Thanks for all you do. Yeah, I think the story in Final Fantasy X's, it's, I think Final Fantasy VII has the best overall characters. I think Final Fantasy X has the best story. And it also has great characters as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what kind of slightly ups it ahead of Seven uh, right. for me. But yes, it is, it is a doozy of a story. Uh, Japanese Demon Lord with five says, seriously, no one mentions Command and Conquer. I but loved Command and Conquer, but it's not on my list. But Generals is what I really got into. I okay. like playing GLA. <laughs> I am um, not an RTS person, mm -hmm. but I was addicted to Red Alert. Command okay. and Conquer Red Alert. Uh, love Ooh. that. Uh, after that, sort of my love of RTS is vanished. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but Red Alert is is phenomenal. And also, we're on number nine. <laughs> <laughs> this As, I, we're, <laughs> we're nerding out. <laughs> I Why haven't oh, I knew they would come? Yep. Uh, as be careful, Mel caught the bouquet. Don't I know it? I uh, I e fat the shit out of that. <laughs> I saw your breakdown of that. That was amazing. That was so legendary. I laughed so hard. <laughs> Clearly, have way too much time on my hands. I want to make a tutorial video, like a like a short mm. reel or something, and say, "Look, ladies, this is how you catch the bucket." How this to catch is how a bucket? You do it. Yeah, yeah. This is what's going to keep you from being a cat lady for the rest the of your face. life. Yeah, you know. I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach women how to do this. <laughs> you were ready. I mean, th you, you were. I was. You were, you were like I was. ready. I was like, and four. Yeah. You you wanted it. They I didn't did. want the uh, the others were half ass in it or oh I'm so embarrassed to be got. No, was there was like, a no, there was I'm a woman it. there who wanted it. And that's it, why she got it. There was. It, I was catching it. There, there was no other option. I was catching it. <laughs> <laughs> by hook or by crook? Yes. Oh, well. <laughs> you nearly, you, you nearly, you nearly went too, too I know. Keen. I did. I really did. But you extended that, those shink, and they just, just like a cat. When a cat jumps, and just gets you. Ah! That's what it felt like. Yeah. I had to twist mid. Twist yeah. midair. Midair, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, best of them I can think of with the five says I all saw Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning is highly underrated. That is a really good game. Uh, with art designed by Todd McFarlane and lore by R.A. Salvador plus uh, Badass Combat. It was a good game and it was uh, unfortunately overlooked. Uh, it, if you haven't ever played that, it's worth checking out. Still today. Hmm. Uh, Clifton 3D with a two euro 50 says Lulu, Lulu, yeah, Lulu all the way. Yeah, Lulu we know why. Is a great character and yeah, obviously beautiful. <laughs> she, was she was working she the was dress. A, she was yeah, she was equipped, you know. She was. <laughs> I can see why Walker, you know, was Yeah. <laughs> no in that game, Walker. Good boy. Walker you know? was about it. <laughs> yeah. Matthew Hammond with a five dollar says uh, Mario Galaxy 2 has to be on the list of the greatest 3D platformers ever created. Uh, the Carnivore Trucker with a $5 is number one, Skyrim. Number two, GTA. Number three, FF7. Number four, Half-Life 2. Number five, Portal. Uh, one and two. Number six, Mass Effect 2. Number seven, Ratchet and Clank 1 to 4. Spyro, 1 to 4 at number eight. Number nine, Tomb Raider Legend. And number 10, Final Fantasy and Hi, Melanie. Hi. Good uh, Eric. Yeah, it's a not bad list. You know, there's some interesting ones there. Yeah. Uh, Eric Stratton with a 777 says, Miss Melanie, can't review them all, but what do you think of the list of best Christian video games on Wikipedia? And Ooh, what's your favorite? I haven't seen that list, um, but just off the top of my head, I had a lot of fun at like the Chuck E. Cheese arcade with um, the Noah's Ark game. <laughs> <laughs> wow that was fun <laughs> you have to just flood everyone <laughs> it's like you have to you have to get the animals lead the animals up to the ark before it starts ah. flooding if i remember correctly uh but that was always a fun time uh series zero four the ten dollars says final fantasy 10 was the first in the series to have voice acting correct uh which added a huge extra level of depth to the uh to the mm -hmm. characters in the game of course OP the Viking with a 50 Norwegian says, I know I am old as sin compared to the rest of you. Mm -hmm. uh, but Wolf, uh, Wolfenstein 3D back in 91 made me the F, uh, FPS fanatic I am to this day. Yeah, nice. Wolfenstein, the first one, a lot of fans of that. Uh, David Grimes with a two euro says, ever play Zombies Ain't My Neighbor on the on yes! Sega's. I played on SNES. That huh. my brothers and I, that almost made my list. It barely missed my list. Um, but that's some of my most fun gaming times is playing co-op. You had Zeke and uh, I believe her name was, I forgot. I, I, but yeah, the two characters, it started with a J. It was like Julie or something like that. Um, but yeah, that game was a blast. Fighting giant babies and zombies. <laughs> Sign me up. It's, it's great. I called a giant baby myself many years ago. <laughs> uh, Peter Bradley with the $10 says, my list would have to be Resident Evil 4, uh, Resident Evil Remake, sorry, Bioshock, 
Batman Arkham City, Dead Space 2, Final Fantasy 6, Fallout, Halo 3, Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, Skyrim, and Resident Evil 4. Some, some doozies on there. Uh, Jai Tapai with Sorcerer for 5. You both are awesome. Need more of this collab. Who, like I said, the see, you know, who knows? If you like this, and there's 2,300 yeah. people watching, so, you know. There we go. Uh, a sequel could be in the making. Uh, Kiru Kazuma has become a Witcher. Thank you. Craig Morning with the $10 says, my top five Elder Scrolls, Oblivion, Final Fantasy VI, Super Smash Brother Melee, Ultima Online, Harvest Moon slash Stardew Valley. Ooh. There's a legacy version of those games. Love you as and Melanie. Christ is King. Amen. Uh, Harvest Moon barely <laughs> missed my list as well. The old school Harvest Moon, like now it's Story of Seasons as a lot of us know what the developers and all that stuff. But um, I loved I Friends of Mineral Town is the first Harvest Moon game I played, and I was just hooked. So fun. Mm. I think my sis is into that sort of Harvest mm -hmm. Moon Stardew Valley type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Doc32 of the $5 says, you missed that one game from that one thing that one time. <laughs> You're absolutely right. 100%. Uh -oh. Watching you two nerd out is great. This is, honest to God, this is why I wanted this stream. Yes. Because uh, Melanie, uh, you know, when I say Melanie's legit, Melanie's legit. <laughs> uh, and so I really wanted to talk to somebody who's a fucking legit gamer to just nerd out about games. Um, I love that. Something I rarely get to do. And we talk about a lot of crap. Mm -hmm. So it's it's lovely to, to, to flick the script on that one and talk oh, about yeah. stuff, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and having, it's a great week. Mission Impossible 7. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now this. <laughs> Sound of Freedom back at number one in the US charts. Ooh, very good. Gone ahead of Insidious and Indiana Jake. So um, <laughs> this is a good week, folks. This is a real winner of a week for us. Uh, King Oblivion with a two dots. His favorite game is Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Uh, Matt Fatchin with a 10 Canadian says, what are your guys' thoughts on Assassin's Creed 2? In Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which are my favorite games of all time. Do you have any thoughts I on Assassin's Creed? I loved Assassin's Creed 2. That <laughs> it's my favorite Assassin's Creed game. I was really into Assassin's Creed at one point, uh, not as much now. Uh, but yeah, Assassin's Creed 2 was just spectacular. I couldn't, I just couldn't get into Assassin's Creed. I couldn't really? do it. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people struggle with it, but I loved, I used to really, really love it. But it's weird because there's a couple of games on this list, and you're like, you like these, but you're not into a. Uh, <laughs> Saber tooth crotch cricket has been a bard for seven. Matt Fatchin has been a or just become a bard. Deranged lunatic has been a sorcerer for once. Says Melanie, could you show us easy how you catch a bucket or I how will. to be a wide receiver? I will. I will show you the ways. I will make the video. Yeah. <laughs> How to <laughs> uh, Bashy Washy gifting 10 memberships to the stream. Right. Bashy Washy, thank you. Um, massive bloody L chat, you're going for it. Uh, massive dynamics with a five pound says, Have you viewed uh, <laughs> dude? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> the last time going, no, no, we're gonna move on from that. <laughs> uh, <but> thank you, <laughs> Japanese demon lord. With a ten dollar says, if Leisure Suit Larry in Land of the Lounge Lizards is not on your list, as I'm going to be very disappointed. And unfortunately, there's no Leisure Suit Larry on the list. Uh, it's a me, Mario. With a ten dollar says, 1997 Blade Runner for PC, amazing game. Um, oh, which which game am I thinking of? Oh my goodness me. Um, flashback on the Mega Drive, aka Genesis. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. If you want like a, a cyberpunk Blade Runner-esque uh, 2D platformer flashback, uh, absolutely uh, epic, immense game uh, on the Genesis slash Mega Drive. Uh, Malik Gurley with a $5 says, uh, GTA, uh, San Andreas, Bioshock, Fallout New Vegas, Oblivion, Jackson Dexter, uh, Assassin's Creed 2, Arkham Asylum, L.A. Noir. Interesting one, L.A. Noir. Uh, never read a single person's facial expression in that at all. Hitman, Blood Money, Witcher 3, and Bloodborne. Good Ooh. choices. 
Gary Foister has been a bard for 19. Jai to pie with a two dollar says I think I have to rank Batman Arkham City as my number one. I think uh, I think that's a safe number one. Foxhound with a five pound says number one Witcher, number two Metal Gear Solid, number three Mass Effect, number four Last of Us, number five Dragon Age Origins, Mission Impossible Seven. Uh, awesome. Are you and Mel? Oh, oh, as are you and Mel. <laughs> you <brought laughs> the good work. Thank you, uh, thank you man. And uh, yeah, some good, good game, good gam in there, good gam. Uh, this mind intentionally left blank with the five dollars says at Melanie. Uh, you have the bucket. I hope you find the love of your life. You deserve it. God <laughs> bless you. you. That's so sweet. Thank you. You have the bucket. You have the power. That's true. I have the power. I'm holding on to you, it. You saw the video. You know. I did. You said you, I could pick any man, and he has to say they yes. Can't, they can't say no. Yeah, you have the bucket. So, the bucket is the power. Yeah. So I just got to keep my eyes out and. We'll see. <laughs> youth in Asia. Wow. The youth. That is youth in Asia. Uh, <laughs> not Canadian healthcare. Uh, with a $10 says, as I found your channel when you were doing wow content, uh, vanilla through to Mr. Pandaria was great. Other than that one, you know, I couldn't agree with you more. And wow is not on the list because mm -hmm. ultimately for me, wow ended at the end of Cataclysm. Uh, Kaya Link with a $10 says to give a shout out to the Dragon Age Origins, Payaz and Melanie. That game really nearly found its way on my list. It, it was a great game. It's really, that it was this close. Mm -hmm. It was that or Ico. And I decided to go with Ico because oh, it was okay. slightly different. Yeah. Slightly different. And you got, I like the um, mm -hmm. variety there. Uh, Sparky T88 with a $5 says, help my top 10 list has 30 games. How do I pick? Easy. You do another stream another yes. time with 10 more games. Like we're going to do. Because <laughs> yeah. it's going to be so easy to do that. Yep. Uh, Eddie Brock with a two year of fitty. Melanie, have you ever played any of the Spider Man games? I did. Um, in terms of like recent ones with Miles Morales and the one before, I just really struggled to get into it though. Yeah. Okay. We've got to smash through just a couple more and then we've got to carry on. You guys have been too. <laughs> You kind here. A uh, bass player with a ten dollar says, "I can't make a single list, and I have to go top ten from each generation." Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea to do. Okay, that is you know, maybe maybe idea. we might. Should, should I, like I said, I have not put MMORPGs on this mm -hmm. because I think that's a completely different genre. Otherwise, it'd just be Final Fantasy fourteen, right? You know, Final Fantasy eleven, World of Warcraft. That, but there is a game which sort of breaks the rules in that. But okay, I can get away with it, and there's a reason why I can get away with it. Okay. Um, but just picking a few of my favorites, Crash Bandicoot, Metroid series, Bioshock, Smash Brothers series, and Fallout. Grumpy Dad reacts with a $10. Any thoughts on the X-Wing and the TIE Fighter PC games? I like Rose Squadron for the uh, GameCube. That was awesome. I bought that on release day with the cube. Very good. <laughs> uh, Shaker Maker with a $5. says top five, Final Fantasy IX, Last of Us, Assassin's Creed 2, GoldenEye, and Maniac Mansion for the SNES. Right, we're gonna we're gonna carry on. Otherwise, we're gonna be here all day. <laughs> Thank you, chat. Melanie, you're number eight. Okay, number eight. I have this is a newer one. It's Final Fantasy Three Houses, or not Final Fantasy <laughs> Fire Emblem Fire Three Emblem. Houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's funny because I started Fire Emblem with Blazing Blade, and that should be up there instead. But Three Houses, I still, I, I, I. It was a struggle for me to pick between the two, but three houses made it because I just mm. love how you actually train up your students. You're teaching your students. You have a connection with your units mm -hmm. for that reason. Um, so there just feels like there's a lot more on the line. Now, of course, I played in cl hard mode classic because to me, I, you can't play Fire Emblem games on casual mode where your units no. die and they no. can come back. No, no. that no. is not a true Fire no. Emblem experience. You no. have to have yes. you have to have it all out on the line there. Yes, you, teachers you, can yep. die. Yep, students. If, even if the teachers, teachers don't, you know, yeah. you know, they they can die as well if you if you don't make sure they're protected in fight. Yeah, and so I I just think such a phenomenal game. Um, having the different um people that you can pick, the different like almost like Hogwarts houses in a way. But sure, I was sure. golden yeah, yeah, yeah. here. Yeah. I was golden mm -hmm. here. Um loved claude uh he was amazing and yeah i just it was great i, I think this is a this is a great pick i got hooked on it 
Mm -hmm. I got it's not it's not on my list, but again, it's because there's so many good ones to choose from. Uh, but um, I hammered that game, absolutely hammered it. Yeah, I was totally invested in all the relationships with my squad. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, every time I was back at the the school, the academy, whatever you want to call it, I was going around. I was making sure that my yep. squad was talked to. I was, you know, I was giving them the gifts. I was going for tea with them. I was doing all the all that shit. Yeah, uh, building up fun. all those relationships. Um, you know, the, I love the leveling up because this is the a game like this is is sort of um, spiritual successes to stuff like Shining Force. Yep. And I used to I, the Shining Force games are incredible. So yeah, I love it when you can turn an archer into you know an assassin, whatever it, whatever it is. You know, you get those great mm -hmm. um, those great sort of boosts to the classes and and yeah, yeah it, it was. God, that was that was great. I haven't finished. Haven't Stop even it. finished it yet. Oh, it's intense. It gets really intense. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, stuff stuff has happened already, mm -hmm. which I don't want to go into. Okay, but stuff has happened already, and there's been some shit going down. You know, which which house did you pick? Uh, I went with the the uh, I can't remember the name. You watch Evil Guard? I'm guessing like the the. The red, the one, red. The, the woman. The red. Yeah, 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 I knew yeah, it. Yeah. I knew you went with yeah. Eagle Guard. Huh? <laughs> Got me. There you go. Got me. <laughs> That's what both of my brothers did too. Ah. A lot of people love Eagle Guard. She's great. I, I don't blame you. Yeah. It was uh yeah, but that's uh it's a wonderful game, and I do want to finish that at some point. Mm -hmm. Uh so we'll it's definitely amazing. go with that. Mm. Yeah. I was I was so surprised, I was surprised at how. I, watched, I can't remember who it was. I, I think it was you. I was in your stream watching uh -huh. you play. And I was just like, oh, I, I gotta I gotta get this. And I think I was watching like the the first the first uh stream that you did with it. Oh, okay. Uh on Twitch. And I was just like, oh, this looks this looks good. So nice. I ended up buying it because of that. And then I was nice. like, this was great. So I'd I'd That's go to bed game. and I'd get my switch out and I'd be yeah. I've been there for hours. Yep. Just just <laughs> going through, man. But yeah, same as you. Mm -hmm. You got you gotta put it on. If you die, you're dead. Oh yeah, that's how you gotta play it. If you're if you're not playing it, I, I can't even imagine wanting to play it if it wasn't like that. Because no. I need to have the pressure. It, it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You gotta be because you can get reckless. If you don't, you can get you can purposely exactly. get reckless. Then you don't care as much. It's like, oh, it's fun to actually care and actually strategize in a way of like, Ex I am mm -hmm. not going to let my students die. This is out of the question. Yeah, you, you make sure you put your glass cannons behind the the wall of, yep. of, of strength and you know your your archers. Again, mm -hmm. same as same as the the, the spellcasting glass cannon. You gotta make sure these guys. But also, then that makes sure that you make sure you got your wall, your wall of strength yep, in front. Exactly. And, and... <laughs> there is, uh, yeah, there's some strategic choices to go. Great, great choice that one. Mm -hmm. uh, number eight for me. We're going back to the. We're staying on the PlayStation One. Okay. And we stay. We're going with uh, Siphon Filter Two. Ooh. That is a classic <laughs> one that I just ha I've not played, but I recently got it uh, because I've been like building up my ps1 collection mm. so that's that's on my two playlists soon uh siphon filter 2 is very much like tomb raider 2 the first mm -hmm. siphon filter game is great i love the character of gabe logan uh love lian zing mm -hmm. and the second one just takes all the good ideas from the first one and then just absolutely catapults it to the stratosphere oh, in the nice. second the story's fantastic the gameplay just gets even tighter in the second one Leanne becomes a much more involved character in the second mm -hmm. one as well, and uh, it's it's a it's one of these great espionage. Um, you are a, a government agent. Things go wrong. Your government betrays. All this, all these sort of nice. twists and turns uh, that you'd expect from a series are are absolutely encapsulated in Siphon Filter, and it's a franchise that I'm mortified mm -hmm. that they they haven't. There's there's a few. There's like perfect dark and stuff like that oh yeah franchises which are just neglected and and have so much potential and the first siphon filter game came out just before or alongside metal gear solid mm -hmm. and i was a massive metal gear solid fan and i was like ah oh, this siphon filter game is gonna be it's a, a discount metal gear sort of thing right and it was like oh my god no this is this is a legit franchise in its own right and gabe logan 
and the voice actor because it's all voice acted as well oh nice uh gabe logan has a the the voice actor had a very specific voice mm -hmm. uh it wasn't just generic you know generic right uh, an agent man no he had this very <laughs> specific voice on him uh -huh. kind of like sam fisher i uh, love that, yeah michael ironside kills michael it ironside, yeah yeah and he, and he just gives that complete extra level to the characters because you, you, it really feels like there's something different. Mm -hmm. So it sort of takes genres like Bond and it takes genres Mission Impossible, you know, all those kind of spy ones mm -hmm. and just really goes goes with it. Um, and, and it, you know, it's like, it's like Bond meets Bravo 2-0. You know, it's, okay. it just, they get crazy at times. And yeah, really, really well thought out uh, constructed stories with great characters, uh, and I think the final final Siphon Filter game came out on the PlayStation Two. But by then, it wasn't connected. You know, it just didn't feel even right. connected to the, the one, two, three, which came out yeah. um, on the PlayStation One. But this was a, from what I can remember, this was a two disc game, mm -hmm. and and for an action for an action game. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, even all the Tomb Raiders came on one disc. Exactly. And those games are huge. Like, yes. um, Last Revelation, especially, there was so much. Like, it, it almost felt. I love Last Revelation. Open world before open world, in a way, but mm. you had to load in. Um, but yeah, huge game and still just one disc. <laughs> yeah. So, Siphon Filter uh, 2, just, just bring it back. But I think, it, is it Konami? I don't uh, even know. No, no, it's no, it's it's not. It's like, oh my god, don't say it's three four three. It's it, I'll, I'll have to check which studio it is, mm -hmm. but neglected franchise. If I if I had the money, right, I would get. The, I would buy this franchise. I would buy this yeah. franchise if I had the coin. <laughs> and I'd be like, right now, I need to find a studio. Mm -hmm. You know, and and let's make let's make uh let's re re not redo, but let's reinvent siphon filter. Right. You know, let's let's try and look at all the aspects of the original game, which rang true. Don't try and turn it into a story. Exactly. You know, I, story, I mean, a film. Right. There's, there's too many film video games out there. That's let's what they did to Tomb Raider. Go exactly. Gameplay, mm -hmm. gameplay, gameplay. Yep. Have your interconnective tissue. Yep. Fine. Yep. But gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. Yes. Focus on that, and uh, and give people, you know, give people a, a, a gay old time. Uh, yeah. In a happy kind of a way, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's I would love to do that. I would love to uh, to be able to take that franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, Eddie A with a five dollar says, "If you remember this game, you're old, uh, you're an old fart like me." X Men Two, Clone Wars for Sega Genesis, another great game. Enjoying the stream, thank you. Um, I don't think I was into the X Men at that time, so it probably passed me by. As a DC boy, and I got mm -hmm. very tribal about these things. <laughs> i think it's the nicest way to to put it um uh as uh azul with a five pound says either of you brave enough to play ghosts and goblins on the nez oof <laughs> i i think i played it on the mega uh mega drive uh but that was I thing it might 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 be this nice that that was hard i that I've... shit was hard man I can't deal. I watched my brother play a little bit of it, and I'm like, this is this is going to be too much for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, there were games. I mean, I, I played the shit out of things like Kid Chameleon mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, on the Genesis Mega Drive. Uh, and they were they were tough enough. I mean, those were back in those days, they were games that you just wouldn't finish because they were just Oh, Battle hard. Toads. <laughs> yeah, ba <laughs> oh. I just played some Double Dragon with my brother's um uh, last weekend it was like because we we beat a couple games we beat goof troop uh and we beat um uh turtles in time but then we got to double dragon it's like okay battletoads double dragon we're not we're not gonna beat this one today <laughs> golden axe stuff like that oh, yeah they were hard mm -hmm. uh giant to pie with a two dollar says the first two splinter cell games are in my top five nice Matthew Hammond with a five dollar says, "Is Super Mario World the best two D platformer? What is the best fighting game? Mortal Kombat two, Street Fighter two, or Tekken? Tekken three? Uh, I would go Street Fighter two on that list. 
I'll go Tekken 3. That, cool. that would be the best, best beat them up for me. Uh, Street Fighter 2, never a bad one. Good grief. Mm -hmm. Probably, I think that's the most iconic oh, beat yeah. them up of all time is, is uh, Street Fighter 2. Mm -hmm. uh, Munchlack77 has been a sorcerer for nine. Top five, Witcher 3, Bayonetta, Red Dead Redemption 2, Stardew Valley, Final Fantasy 9. Final Fantasy 9 has got a big fan base. That one. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gary Foister with a five pounds says number one will be Baldur's Gate three. It has the bare necessities <laughs> of life. Oh man, that's hilarious! <laughs> got everything you need. Got the bear. You see the, the tweet I did was like, gamers, can we just have good stories and good characters without any weirdo bullshit? <laughs> and then it's got that meme from that that pawn shop show. Oh yeah. Got, the best I could do you <laughs> is a guy fucking a bear. That's hilarious. This is what happens when you have these um, furries and stuff that take over gaming industry. <laughs> just, just, like they them. I, I can furries. understand. Yeah, I can understand. Like if if you're if you're attracted to like a Makote in Final Fantasy, because at least they're human. You know, right. they're humanoid, but they've got like cat ears and a tail. We mm. get it, you know. We but we get it, right? Yeah. But they're a human. They've got two exactly. arms, two legs, bum, titty yeah. bags, you know, whatever. <laughs> but you know, oh, I'm just transforming into a bear, and let's get our sex on. It's like, yeah, that's that's different. <laughs> like if Tifa, if Tifa was just like, you want to get it on? Yes, please. And then she turns into a fucking mongoose. I'd be like, ah, <laughs> ah, no, 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 Tifa, no, mm -hmm. kind of like the feet. <laughs> they don't, they don't help themselves. They really don't. No, help they, themselves. they really don't. Uh, Rory the Romulan with a five dollar says, "Don't know if I have a favorite, but these have a special place in my heart." Alan Wake, beautiful choice. Love that game. Cannot wait for Alan Wake 2 later this year, by the way. So excited for that. Uh, FFT. Final Fantasy Sorry. Tactics. <laughs> I sneezed. Yeah. I sneezed. Did, did, did. I think that's Final Fantasy Tactics. Tyranny, L.A. Noir. Again, that's two times that's been on there now. Final Fantasy 7. Easiest $5 you ever made, by the way. I don't know. You should have seen what I did in my youth. Um, <laughs> DJ UXO with a $5. So some of my favorites, Mule back on the Commodore, uh, Alpha Protocol on the Xbox 360, No Man Scam, Sky, I mean, uh, <laughs> The State of Decay 2, and anything from XCOM. If I wanted to go really back into a game, I would have had Repton on the BBC Model B. They, they, I, I'll have to talk to you about Repton one day. Uh, the Ordinary Movie Guy with the $5. Two of my favorite series are the Total War series and the Dynasty slash Samurai Warriors series. Dynasty Warriors used to be massively popular. Uh, $20 from War Phoenix 393, Final Fantasy uh, 13. Oh. Fuck off. <laughs> I could not get into Final get Fantasy 13. I couldn't no. do it. My brothers and I all tried playing it. And the other, uh, we're all like, can someone play this so we can just watch what happens? Yes. And none of us yeah. could endure the gameplay. We're like, nope, this is, this is just going to be a loss. I, we're uh, trading it in. <laughs> I've tried three times to properly play this, Final Fantasy 13. Yep. I drop in the same point every time. I've literally just exhausted my fucks to give. Yep. And and I get to a certain point in the game and I'm just like, I I, I have no motivation, nothing to carry on yep, anymore. I couldn't do Zilch. it. Zilch. <laughs> um, but okay, hey, it's $20. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Star Wars Galaxies, Kotor, uh, Halo 2, Bon Warfare 3, Assassin's Creed, Ratchet and Clank, Total War, Ratchet and Clank 2, by the way, Total Warhammer 3, and World of Warships. There are some redeeming ones in there. The Drake Hunter, been a sorcerer for 15. Oregon Trail is obviously everyone's number one. Love it. <laughs> right next to I did play a lot of Oregon Trail. That's good times. Okay. Skip Cole with the $5. Sam and Max played it with my four-year-old son on my lap. Awesome. Uh, Jason Platten with a $10 says, uh, number one, Last of Us, PlayStation 3. Number two, Witcher 3, PS4. Number three, Final Fantasy 6 on the SNES. Number four, Zelda Link, uh, Zelda 2 Link. Uh, Zelda Link 
two linked to the past i think it's going to be uh mm -hmm. on the snes uh five resident evil seven on the playstation vr uh six god of war five playstation five god of war four is number seven on the ps4 number eight metal gear solid ps1 number nine resident evil four on the gamecube number 10 mass effect 2 on the xbox 360 some doozies in there uh empty sorcerer for 33 says aoaz melanie apologies if you talked about this but surely mass effect deserves at least an honorable mention we're on number we've just finished number eight <laughs> we're an hour in and we finished number yeah. eight <laughs> We're gonna <laughs> smash through a bit more, but yo. Know. Uh, ah! uh, it's my GOAT trilogy. Cheers, Mr. Gruland with a Witcher for 21 says best RTS is Supreme Commander 1, best adventure game, uh, Kyrandia 1 to 3, best humor, Day of the Tentacle. Winter Wolf has been become a member at the Witcher level. Thank you, Norman. Uh, James Norman has been a bard for three. Andrew Werdner with a saucer for three, as you're my favorite person named as, and I love you, and thank God for that. Uh, was that weird to say? No. Nope. Uh, always, God bless you, and Melanie, stay based, you based MFers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Noah Mint with a $20 says, my top five is Assassin's Creed, Arkham City, Infamous 2, Transformers Fall of Cybertron 1, Ghost of Tsushima number one. This was a bit hard to choose, but these games have truly changed the way I look at video gam. Uh, Shark Dentures with a five says, I rented Shining Force SO so many times from the corner convenience store. They gave it to me because I paid the purchase price several times over. Shining Force games, phenomenal. They're going to be, I want to add those to my uh, Genesis, uh, Sega Mega Drive Genesis for You uh, collection. Definitely. Uh, Stardust Viking with a $50 says uh, Deus Ex number one, then Morrowind, Silent Hill 2, System Shock 2, Baldur's Gate 2. I like these talk. I, I, uh, I like these talk about what you love streams. Um, I'm loving it from a personal perspective. Oh, this is, this is refreshing. Uh, it's really fun. This, this is, this is, yeah. this is medicine. <laughs> it is. <laughs> this is spiritual healing. Yeah. This, yeah this <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I even feel it myself. You know? I needed this, man. Yesterday it was like I, I was, I, I was like, man, I, I'm, I need to maybe spend a little less time on Twitter or social media mm. right now because it's starting to like get to me. So then now it's like, okay, this is refreshing. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm definitely looking at uh, scaling back the Twitter time. Yeah, <laughs> um, things like this work a whole lot better, folks. And mm -hmm. uh, let's just do a couple more, then we'll get to sevens. Remember, I've already done my number six because we ha True. we actually had, had cross pollination in our personal <laughs> top tens. That's quite that's quite a big thing, you know. That's great. There's a lot of video games out there, and we on one. Mm -hmm. uh, Big Red one hundred one with five dollars says games make my list based on how many hours I have and can dump into replaying them. Mass Effect Trilogy, Fallout New Vegas, Dead Space 1, Skyrim. It's good, it's good choices. I understand the mentality of that. As I discussed earlier, I used to buy a lot of RPGs simply because the time that you would spend. So it was value for my money. I didn't like uh, mm -hmm. quicker, shorter games because I felt right. as if, uh, you know, what am I going to do now? You know? Exactly, yep. Uh, Jim with the five euro says some of my favorite games: God of War Five, Mass Effect, Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Soul, uh, Dark Souls Three, Resident Evil Four Remake, Crash Team Racing, Fallout New Vegas, and Ooh. Witcher Three. Crash good Team one. Racing so good that almost made my top ten, but just not quite. Mm. I played so much. That's my favorite kart racing game. So good. Okay, I'd go with uh, Mario Kart on the uh, sixty-four and okay, cool. All right. Uh, I used to I used to smoke the devil's lettuce and, <laughs> and play that when I was a young whiffer snapper and uh some of the best <laughs> the real like... Steven uh TV with a five dollar says now we know everyone's number one game it's ET oh yeah I keep mine uh my ET copies uh extra special safe in a landfill Oh hi Azza Melanie. Hi. Hi. Um let's grab do 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 hold on. 
Jim with a f uh yeah yeah sorry just did Jim just did you uh Vinictius Haas with a sorcerer for 13 says I was in need of a good live stream talking about games well sir you got one and let's finish for now for now with Eduardo uh, Edward uh, Perino with a $10 says Melanie Mac looking good and so is as as I love that you've been getting fit uh you could get a uh, good shoulder shoulder press and that lat pull down are the best I do I do actually do a lot of shoulder and lat stuff uh i am what uh hold on i gotta do a quick 55 pounds down in 13 weeks that is incredible i'm uh i'm going for it that is so good don't worry ashley i'm coming for you <laughs> uh so we'll pick up the we'll pick up the super chats in a moment chat you've been going crazy and thank you so much melone number seven all right number seven i told you there was a little spoilers ahead of time uh shadow of the colossus boom yeah so i played back when it first dropped loved it, it just completely blew my mind um i'm a big fan of like monster movie type stuff with like godzilla mm. things like that and so the whole thing of like oh wow like you're you're taking down these colossus like that how epic is that but it's funny because when i first played though it was like this almost feels kind of wrong <laughs> it's like I'm well it was that thing. was just the... it, that's what's funny is how it turned out being that <laughs> yeah. way but yeah i was like oh this feels a little wrong but this is fun um i just think you know, and especially at the time and stuff, it was so different. It was so unique. Mm. Um, it didn't have so much of like, oh, complete this level, complete this level, this and that. It was like, wow, you're really just hunting down these Colossus and they all have their own unique ways to be taken down. Mm. Um, just fantastic. The remake also was great, uh, which is always refreshing to see because so many times we'll see remakes just ruin classics. But in this case, I felt like it was awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, we have some interconnected tissue here because of Ico. Mm -hmm. And and because I put Ico, I didn't put Shadow of the Colossus right. on my list. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we'd, we're playing, you know, studio favorites and all that. Yeah. Uh, with this. Uh, but yeah, it, it was, it was, it's such an incredible juxtaposition that you do Ico, uh, where, you, where you're doing a game where you're not getting involved in combat and you, you, you're, you're, you know, negotiating your way through, and yes, you're avoiding stuff and all that kind of jazz. But mm -hmm. then you go for a second one, which is sort of the antithesis of it, and you yep. are going for mega combat on yep. these these uh, unbelievable uh, creatures, um, which are going around the world. And and again, a nice little twist on the story. Mm -hmm. um, you have your, you know, oh, I'm doing good with saving the day, and then he's right. like, oh shit, no, yep. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm bad boy. Yep. <laughs> Oopsies, I got I got played. I got played here. And and yeah, so yeah, it's nice to have um you can only really do that a certain amount of times mm -hmm. uh without you know subverting uh, expectations constantly. So it's just nice at that time right. that you, you kind of had that twist of uh no, you're a nerdy, nerdy, nerdy boy. <laughs> So I like that. My number seven, we're jumping to the Dreamcast. Oh, okay. And we're going to sh Shenmue. Oh, I never played this, but I know people who love Shenmue love, love, love it. They are like diehards. Uh, I, I fell in love. I mean, I think at the time... That it came out, this was the most expensive game ever made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, of course, I, I loved, I absolutely adore the Dreamcast. Right. Uh, I think it was a console ahead of its time. I really do. I never right? had one. So, yeah. Oh, it was, I mean, this was, you had the internet access on it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was trying to focus on things like online play as well. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're going back to the 2000. And, and, uh, just, just from uh, what it was attempting to do, I mm -hmm. loved it. I, I loved it, and it, unfortunately, never had the software support on it. Right. But it, but it existed much longer in Japan than it did in the West. Mm -hmm. When it died in the West, it still went on for years. You know, still making games 
uh, in Japan for years, but that was half the problem. A lot of the games that came out in Japan were never making the way over to the West. Right. And so, and so um, we were so limited for, for choice on that. But, but Shenmue, which was made specifically at the time for the Dreamcast, mm-hmm. and, and just the sort of ambitious nature of it, it was like Peter Molyneux, but he actually, put his, he actually followed through with what he said he was going to do. Mm-hmm. As opposed to promise the world and deliver a sausage sandwich, and that and that's it. Um, <laughs> it was just such a uh, an eclectic gathering of gameplay styles because mm-hmm. it was a it was a beat them up, but then it was a a a one on one beat them up. And, and weren't and then there it, like mini games and stuff? Yeah, too? yeah, yeah. yeah. But then there was jobs. You know, you would ju- you would you would go and do a job. You'd drive a forklift and, and yep. <laughs> earn some money and put stuff away and and or, and then you could go to the arcade and play old school uh so, you know team sonic games and whatnot yeah uh, you could go play afterburner and 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 all this sort of jazz in the in the arcades and walk around the town and and you of course you had your story that went along with it and, and you know ryu with his jacket his, his mm-hmm. iconic jacket and everything and uh, so, yeah, the Shenmue 1 and Shenmue 2. And this was, I think, the plan was to have seven Shenmue games. Wow. That was the plan. But um, because it was limited to the Dreamcast and because the, the Dreamcast wasn't highly supported, even though it was a big seller for the console, it just wasn't enough to mm-hmm. justify the, um, the cost of the games itself. Right. Uh, and, so, and so development ceased after, after Shenmue 2. And then uh, back, back in the uh, mid two thousand mid mid two thousand and teens, they oh, crowdfunded they? Shenmue yep. three. They went with the crowdfunding of Shenmue three. Yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I wasn't earning a lot on YouTube then because I, right. I was only a few years into YouTube and I wasn't mm. earning a lot. But I pumped whatever disposable I had into making that making that game happen. Yeah, uh, and, and it you know he got funded and he got funded well above what they wanted i think they wanted two million and they raised seven million dollars mm-hmm. and sony came in and sony pumped a few million into it as well uh and so at least we got a shenmue 3 and a, and a conclusion and yes time had moved on mm-hmm. and yes the gameplay style did feel dated and, and and you know of its time uh if it was from those days but it was still it was still nice to have some sort of conclusion. Yeah, the, the serenity to the Firefly sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But at the t- at, at the time, they were incredible, and just the variety of stuff that you had to do, uh, learning the different techniques, getting involved in all the different fights. Great characters, great fun. Yeah, Shenmue is is a bit of a it's in it's in there. It, it's I always like going to stay in there for me. I love mm. it. Uh, so let's do your number six because we've okay. already done my number six because of the cross pollination. True. So number six? Uh, my number six, and I've seen it in chat a few times, uh, is Jack Two from the Jack and Daxter <laughs> trilogy. Yeah. yeah I, I and I went with two because I I do feel like that is the best one. The original Jack and Daxter was fun. It got us familiar with the world and the characters and stuff. Even though Jack didn't talk in that game, Jack Two just took things to the next level. Like you were saying with Tomb Raider Two and all that. It's mm. like um they they fleshed out Jack as a character. He really was perfect for the time that the game came out to just kind of like that long hair, that like dark Jack form he could take and go into kind of like that edgy uh edgy vibe um love 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 the characters kira ashlyn amazing um and then it also just had like you know you had your action you had the cool story and stuff but the humor was Mm. amazing and no way would that fly now that's why i don't want to see naughty dog continue with jack and daxter games because there's no way there's no way they would play around with that kind of humor anymore. The fat jokes, no. the jokes about women and stuff. It, it just wouldn't happen. <laughs> no, I tell you what it would have, though. I think we can fill in those gaps already. Yeah. He uh, <laughs> would have plenty. Oh, he would have plenty of, let's just say, inclusion and representation. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't trust Naughty Dog to make me a cup of coffee today, but I, there you go. I wouldn't either. <laughs> They used to be such an amazing company as well. 
Yeah. And I felt like at that time there was like, you had people who were really big into Ratchet and Clank or Jack and Daxter. It was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. which one is your fave? Which one is, and I was always more of a Jack and Daxter person. My brothers were more into Ratchet and Clank, which I still liked, but Jack and Daxter was just it for me. Loved it. Even, uh, even the combat racing, the racer spinoff was a really mm. fun game. It had a good story. Yeah. Um, Crash Bandicoot. That's Naughty Dog as well. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So they, they have these great little quirky, you know, quirky character, quirky character games. Oh, once upon a time in a galaxy far, 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 far away. <laughs> but then Ellie came along. Yep. I mean, even with Uncharted, I mean, the Uncharted series starts off incredibly. Mm -hmm. um, and is that, I mean, I am not a big fan of four and, and, and onwards. They, right. They, they really, I, that's the thing. Four was just so yeah. odd to me because I felt like it almost, it, it's like they almost copied off of the newer Tomb Raiders a little bit with that whole storyline of like, oh, okay, now Nate's following his mother's footsteps. She was the archaeologist, all this. And it's, it's weird. It's like, okay, so Tomb Raider got worse when it copied Uncharted and then Uncharted copies the inferior Tomb Raider with that whole story and all the drama with that. I, I didn't like it. And the thing about Uncharted, even though I did enjoy, like, um, I, I really liked uh, Uncharted 2 especially. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But I do think that's kind of what started what we're dealing with now, suffering with now with games is focusing too much on story almost. And yes. too much on, like, bantering. Too much also on if you're stumped on a puzzle, the character's going to tell you what to do type thing. Yeah, um, just, so just stop that. I I do think that Uncharted is partially responsible for kind of pioneering that. And at the time it was different. It was like, oh wow, this is an the the cinematic experience of it was just crazy at the time. Like, whoa, no way. Uh the animations of the characters' faces and stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. Naughty Dog was always so great with that, even with the Jack and Daxter games. Um, but unfortunately, because of you know that being more groundbreaking for the time. Uh, we saw we see developers now go with that but too far yeah it, it's yeah i this is why if, if i <laughs> was fortunate enough to take the, to buy the siphon filter license mm -hmm. like i said the focus would have to be on gameplay um you know go yeah. go to the cinema to watch a movie that's mm -hmm. that's where you exactly. watch exactly that's how i feel yep uh, and i i get i get that they're like yeah we want to sort of you know blend Mm -hmm. uh story and gameplay together okay but unfortunately everyone's doing that now yep and then because everyone's doing too that we're, we're getting way too less gameplay and and yep. much too much of the story and there's nothing wrong with story story's great but mm -hmm. the games that are on my list again playstation one yep playstation two these are games which could still tell a good story concisely mm -hmm. while allowing you plenty the vast majority of the time, gameplay. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, it seems that studios have lost that ability now. Yep, I agree. Uh, and even when you do get gameplay in games, a lot of it could be just moving from point A to point B with mm -hmm. conversation going on. Yes, so you know, you're sort of slow walking. Up and <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just like, I'm not really doing anything. I'm just negotiating my way. Oh, now I've got to do a quick little thing. Yeah. You know, it's it like reading old. a Marvel comic. It's 21 mm -hmm. pages of, of eating food at a table talking about your feelings. Right. And then one panel of the girl hitting the boss once and he's dead. And it's just like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm the hero. Save the day. <laughs> Stop it. Stop yep. it. Okay. Um, let's go back to the chat. Uh, see what they're doing. And then we're going to be hitting top five. All right. Woo. Uh, ro uh, two's news with a two dollars as I predict E.T., for 2,600 to be both uh, as a Melanie's number one. Ooh. Stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> Rob Biller with a $5 says, look at that stick of butter. It's beautiful. Uh, I thought oh, I thought it's talking about me. Okay. All right. Oh. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> Barin uh, Parvis with a $5 says, shout out to Project Zomboid. Most realistic and anxiety-inducing zombie sim around. Uh, it's The Sims meets The Walking Dead. Uh, EXNDL with a $5 says uh, Gunzy, The Jewel, uh, Monster Hunter 1, Final Fantasy 12, uh, Demon's Souls on the PS3, 
Sekiro, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, PS1 version, uh, Final Fantasy IX, Bloodborne, uh, SFX, Tekken, uh, SF3, Third Strike. Okay. Cool. Street Fighter Third Strike. Uh, Sion uh, Arikeo with a $10. It says my top 10 list. Cybernator on the SNES, Wild Arms 2, uh, PlayStation, Siphon Filter, PlayStation 1. Good man. Zone of Enders, PS2. I bought Zone of Enders purely for the Metal Gear demo disc that came with that. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, PS2, uh, Perfect Dark, N64, Morrowind, PC, Chrono Trigger on the SNES, Final Fantasy Tactics on the PlayStation, and Xenogears on the PlayStation. Good list. Uh, Matthew Hammond, $2. Did anyone else, uh, anyone beat Final, F uh, Final Fight without cheating? I, I don't think I ever it. played it. Mm -mm. Uh, Jedo Jaga with a five month sources says I worked as a game tester for Sony, Midway, and Rockstar from 99 to 2007. And Siphon Filter 2 was the funnest to test even while working. Oh, cool. 20 hour shifts four times a month, I think. Awesome. Wow. I, I would have loved to have done that, man. Whew. I remember back in the day, it was like that was, that was every gamer's dream job was to be a game tester. I wanted to be one. Yeah, I did too. I remember there were like commercials for it and stuff and everything on, on G4 or Tech I applied. TV. Yeah. We had some in the UK. We had some in the UK. I used to get Games TM here in the UK magazine. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, I wanted to be a game journalist and a game tester. That's what I yeah. wanted to be. I wanted to be a game journalist. That was my thing. And uh, little did we know that, <laughs> what a game journalist would become. <laughs> mm, we're hiring. Okay, I've got this resume here. Yeah, sorry, we're not looking for actually people that are interested in games. You have to hate games. Oh, you, you got to yeah. be an activist. Hate games, hate the audience. Uh, Preferably and... be transgender and have blue hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I notice you don't have any dye in your hair. I don't have any hair. Could we? Could we rectify that? Can we play with? It? <laughs> well, with the uh, if you did you see that um, when G four came back, um, mm. and somebody somebody went for one of the uh, presenter positions, and the question they got asked is, um, so tell me why we hate Bruce Wayne. Oh like, my! Oh, why we hate Batman? It's like, why do we hate Batman? It's like, uh, because he's a rich white dude. It's just like, you get the job. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm I'm really glad I didn't apply for that because people are asking me. They're like, oh, you need to audition for this. I mean, I wouldn't have got it anyway. Um, but from politics, <laughs> uh, yeah, for po political reasons. Um, but. I I just thought, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to have to move to California. I hate, hate it out there, so I never even auditioned for it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> would have been good. Would have been perfect for you as well. Would have been perfect for you as well. Yeah, but, it would have uh, been. It would have been if they well uh, perfect yeah. if they actually wanted to do anything game related. Exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sal the Meh guy with a two dollar says uh, Mega Man Legends is one of my favorite series. OP the Viking with a 50 Norwegian says, I know, I know. I'm going to get flamed for this, but Crisis, Far Cry 1 and Cyberpunk 2077. Crisis, I can understand. Far Cry yeah. 1, I can understand. Cyberpunk 77, we've all got to sleep, dude. We've all got to sleep. Mm -hmm. I'd rather play Cyberpunk 77 to set me to sleep than... Uh, <laughs> um, but no, it's fine. Not wrong with that. Uh, Veil Poo 86 with a five euro says, uh, one out of two. Uh, super chat, and the second super chat comes with another five euros. I've been following us since his wild times, always love your takes, even back when others disagreed with you. Um, thank you. Well, yeah, I mean, oh, we'll get into that in a minute. So, wow, until uh, Wrath of the Lich King is one of my favorite games, then in no particular order. Uh, Me Saga, um, Starcraft, Monkey Island 2, Final Fantasy 7, and Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, yeah, I used to get a lot, I used to get a lot of shit from other WoW content creators because I, I told it the way I wanted, I saw it. Whereas, and I'd have, I'd have some of them, Melanie, I would have some of them email me going, dude, if you want to play the game, you got to do this. I'm like, <laughs> 
thank you. I'm not wanting to play the game. Right. Wow. Yeah, and I got some big mad that uh, that I did. You know, I wasn't going for the uh, suck ass to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. Dude, if you just if you just did this, you know. <laughs> Wow. That's great. I don't want to do that. <laughs> but yeah, I, used, I mean, I did a few streams with Asmund Gold back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, oh wow! And okay. we would we would have we would have uh, yeah, we did like a three hour three hour discussion together on World of Warcraft. Goodness! Uh, well, and he actually he, he managed to edit it down to like an hour and a half because right. we, we we were going off on all kinds of tangents. Yeah, because this was recorded. We recorded that one, and then we did a couple of streams uh, together with, I think, Mike from Bellular. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, because at the time, like Mike from Bellular, Asmund Gold, myself, we all had like roughly around fourteen, fifteen thousand subscribers together at the same yeah. time, uh, and we're all wow content creators. Mm -hmm. And um, so you know, we'd we'd end up in in conversations about about certain stuff, and uh, yeah, it was great to sort of talk about these things um there were fun times there were fun times until they weren't yeah uh, <laughs> wow was just like wow was just the game it was man. the one it was they called it a wife killer for a reason <laughs> it was it was a, it was a relationship killer you know it was you yep. were with somebody and and you started playing wow kiss that fucking relationship goodbye <laughs> we should go out today darling yes after my raid uh, <laughs> yeah sacrifice many relationship in the name of world of warcraft um yeah once upon a time it was the most addictive thing on the planet mm. i would rather have moved to crack cocaine that, that would have been healthier it would have been healthier yeah <laughs> i would count down hours during um uh, maintenance periods right you know you'd just be there going it's one o'clock in the morning it's not coming back up till eight, nine o'clock in the morning. This is a good time to sleep, but I'm going to stay awake and count down the hours to get back on. <laughs> it was a, it was a nightmare. I could, I remember the day I woke up. It was during Wrath of the Lich King. I woke mm -hmm. up and I logged on, and there was a message from our guild leader, um, which was a married couple, right? And it was just like we've left. Wow! Just out of the blue, you know, they, these were like. It hooked just like the rest of it and it's just like we've had to leave they said um for the sake of of our relationship for the sake of our children um Ooh. we need to be parents you know and, and yeah no it, it, you know yeah. looking, at the time i was like ha, 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 gay <laughs> um but you know look at look at here <laughs> but that's when you're in the hole right and you're just like wow this is crazy i get it but this is crazy and now you're just like oh no they they Heck, you just made uh, a wonderful decision there. Uh, so yeah, they left because they were just like, we, we are spending way too much time. We have beautiful kids. Yeah. We have a beautiful marriage. And we need to keep it this way. And we need to be a family. Um, and yeah, like I said, at the time I was just like, hmm, she was a warlock. Does that mean <laughs> I now move up in the rankings to get that stuff? <laughs> mm, but yeah, those... Whew. Were you Hoarder Alliance? I was hard to start with, and okay. then I then I moved to Alliance after about five years, Ooh. and then I stuck Alliance after that. I uh, played yeah. Horde. I I I did not want to ever play Alliance. I never got super into it though. I casually played just to do a uh, battlegrounds and arenas with my brothers. <laughs> I, well, oh, I I never got into like raids or anything. Yeah. Oh, I, I was into the whole when I was deep. Right. I was I wasn't six feet under. I was six hundred foot under. You know? oh, I was, wow! I was you know we're doing all the grinds. We're doing all the raids. We're doing all the top raids. Uh, we're doing all the uh, arena PvP. Mm -hmm. At my height, I was just it was that was my career was playing WoW. Didn't earn yeah. any money, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> was uh, your life? Back at, well, back in back in the yeah, it's a long story. I don't want to bring a downer on but uh, i was i was out of work for a reason mm -hmm. that i couldn't i couldn't return to work for a sp specific period of time right. so i had nothing really to to occupy my time with right um and so it, my time became wow it gave Yay. me something to do <laughs> kind of uh <laughs> eddie a with a two dollars there's a lot of great games but what about wwf no mercy 
Uh, a lot of people love WWE of No Mercy, and they 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 view it as uh, one of their faves. Uh, I was a SmackDown Two guy. I mm-hmm. thought SmackDown Two PlayStation One that was the best wrestling game I played. Uh, Recef the Cripple with a five dollar says shout out to one of my top three that doesn't get a lot of love. Uh, Sudoken Two. I I actually have uh, four and five in the PlayStation Four collection. I do wow. love I do love my Sudoken games. Uh, and pronounce them really badly. <laughs> uh, Refan with a ten pound says it's hard to give an order as it's mood dependent. I agree. Like I said, there's a gazillion asterisks after these top tens and, and whatnot. Gazillion. Oh yeah. Uh, but if I had to make a choice to play for comfort play, then I'd narrow it down to Mafia Two, Mafia Three, Sticks, both of them, Thief, Metal Age. Uh, Young Skies with a five dollar says, uh, Super Mario RPG, Guilty Gear, uh, X Ard, uh, Battlefield, uh, Bad Company 2, Hollow Knight, uh, Fantasy Star Online 2, Mario Galaxy 2, Star Ocean 2, Wild Arms 2, lots of twos, lots of twos, uh, Metroid Fusion, Conquer Bad Fur Day. I think I've got a few twos in mine as well, you know. Uh, Tiss with a $5 says, Halo 2 uh, may very well be my number one. And the remaster was just a gorgeous love letter to the original. Also, as is going to wind up looking like Bane soon. Of course. <laughs> uh, which will be very painful for you. <laughs> Martin with the mountain bike with the 10 bag says, Half-Life, Prince of Persia, Warrior Within, Witcher, NFS Underground, and the first most wanted. Assassin's Creed 1 and 2, Mortal Kombat, KOTOR, Jedi Academy, Deus Ex, Dishonored, Last of Us, Part 2, NOT! I'm so glad you put NOT at the end of that last of Us Part 2. Thank goodness, we're going to have to ban you. Yeah. Angry Lesbians in a Gay Utopia of Seattle (laughs) 2. Becca Robertson with a £5 says, My all-time favourite game is Diddy Kong Racing! Ooh. Hoping it's released on the Switch. Awesome show, both of you, Becky, AD, and the Guide Dog Quizzy. Lots of love. Back to you, Becky. Brain farts and mini strokes with a five pound says, uh, Games worth the money. Toka Touring Car. That's a beauty. Toka Touring Car Racing was a beauty. Command and Conquer. Colin McRae. Colin McRae on the PS1. Colin McRae Rally. Frickin', I was. That's another huge one for me. Uh, Cod World War. Tenchu, Tenchu Stealth Assassin's first one, superb. Final Fantasy VII and Demolition Derby. Played Demolition Derby on the Sega Saturn, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, Jared Woodward with a $10. I know this isn't the stream for this, but my sports games are my jam. Uh, NCAA 14 College. Football is my favorite video game of all time. Red Dead 2 and the Arkham series are my favorite story-based games. Ken okay. Burrows with a two Canadian, as and Mel. What about Okami? Uh, nice. Not my I never top played ten, it. I never played it. Uh, Wolf. What, the Wolfie Wolf. Yeah, I, I remember it. it. Looked great, but I, that was just one I never, I never got. Hmm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Beautiful to look at. Um, not in my top ten. Though. Mm-hmm. Ian so forth gifted five memberships to the stream. Thank you, Ian. Uh, you're a beautiful man. Uh, $2 from, or £2, I should say, from Yiris Roda. It says, Dreamcast equals most underrated console ever. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. I said, I said ahead of its time to me. Uh, Big Boss SB with a $5. Hail Az and Mel. Either of you ever play Legacy of Kane series? Truly a masterpiece of storytelling and voice acting. Decades ahead of its time. Yeah, first one's incredible, Legacy of Kane. And Legacy yeah. of Kane Soul Reaver. Mm. Soul Reaper, yeah. I, I just got that recently on PS1. Um, I played like the demo that came with, I think it was a Pizza Hut de- demo for wow. PlayStation 1. Uh, those those demos were iconic. There were like two different, two or three different demo discs you could get from Pizza Hut. And they had like Tomb Raider 2 on one. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I do remember they had Soul Reaver. Um, but yeah, I never actually played, I never actually played it, but I got it recently on the PS1. So that's on my list. That's um, they're Activision, aren't they? Well, they're Crystal Dynamics, which is funny. Uh, oh. 
Yeah, well, not the first one. Like, Blood Omen wasn't, I believe. I think what happened was Crystal Dynamics actually hijacked their the, the whole franchise and the plans that they had with it because oh. they were going to go a lot more with, like, a vamp vampire angle and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah, Soul Reaver was actually something entirely different, and they just were like, hey, let's let's make this like a uh, let, let's make this fit in this timeline and, wow. and continue the series with this. Uh, so yeah, definitely was crystal dynamics has a way of taking things and changing them. <laughs> but I mean, hey, in this Laura. case, it worked out for him. In this case, it was, it was good apparently, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just make IDOS great again. You know, that's what for I say. real. Uh, Cyfreak with the 25 Polish says, there are so many good games. Hence, asterisk, 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 asterisk. <laughs> yep. Um, but for me, number one is Counter-Strike. I learned so much from making maps and mods for it. KOTOR is my second favorite. RimWorld is my third. Uh, nice. Ma uh, map producer. That's great. Roller Coaster with a 10 euro says, hey, you two. My favorite games are The Witch Trilogy, Mass Effect 2. Star Wars, uh, Knights of the Old Republic, KOTOR, uh, Fallout New Vegas, Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines, Mafia, Warframe, 40k, Dawn of War. Beautiful. Right, we're gonna we're gonna go into the top five now. We'll come back to you, chat. Don't you worry. But let's uh, talk some gam Meloni. All right, so five is a different one. This is uh RuneScape, but the the OG Ooh. RuneScape. Ooh. I loved RuneScape. Now, when I say OG, I know some people, they think of like what I would call RuneScape 2. That's what they call RuneScape Classic now, I believe. That right. is not the real RuneScape. I'm talking before they went with the 3D, the full 3D models, all that. I played back when it was like in, it was like way early access. There were barely any servers before the wilderness even was added into the game. Uh, I don't know. Have you ever played RuneScape? Ruskate, I never, I never went there. I, when okay. it came, so my it, choice, I'm not going to say because my choice for this kind of overlaps at the, the, you know, the sort of the same time period. Okay, interesting. Um, then I move into Final Fantasy 11, then World of Warcraft, then Final Fantasy 14. So that was sort of my my MMO progression. Someone that said I, it's still yeah. their old school RuneScape. Isn't old school RuneScape what they? Is that what they're calling? Oh, wait. Allow cookies. Let me check this. No, old school RuneScape is RuneScape 2. That is not actually old school RuneScape. That's what makes me so mad is because the actual classic original RuneScape, right? That was a thing. And then they were like, oh, let's do this big graphics overhaul. And that's all it was going to be was just graphics change. Mm. Well, they decided, oh, instead of that, let's go ahead and just change all these mechanics of the game. And they did that and ruined it. I, I couldn't play after that. I liked the original yeah. uh, style. Um, you know, just like when, so when the wilderness was added, that changed everything because that was PVP. Uh, so when you're in the wilderness and there's levels to the wilderness, the deeper you got in there, the, the more of a like level difference you can attack with the peeps so it was an and when you died you lost your stuff if you had a skull over your head so if you attack somebody you get a skull on your head that meant if you die you lose everything now if you die without a skull on your head if you haven't attacked anyone yet then you would keep your best three items right so it was always very intense going out to the wilderness you yeah, never yeah, know yeah. what you were going to run into there could be a group of people there could be you know, anybody there, especially deep there, you could run into a high level, uh, someone way higher level than you that could just murder you. Um, so there's so DK many times. Love them. <laughs> yeah, there's so many times I would like lose a ton of my items and stuff and have to go work for them again. And uh, that was just the best. But what was interesting about it is whenever you got into combat with somebody, it you had to do three rounds before you could run away. Um, oh. Yeah, so you okay. had uh, three rounds of hits. Before, so the goal was to like be, you could make like these glass cannon types. You could train different ways. Like, oh, do I want to train on attack, which is more like accuracy. Um, you had strength, obviously strength and mm -hmm. how hard you're going to hit. And then you had defense. Well, there were some characters I would make that would just be complete glass cannons, like train right. all on strength and all that. And so the goal was, well, you want to kill that person within knock those out, yeah, three knock hits. Out. Three, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, it was just, it was a lot of fun. 
And then once they changed it, it wasn't, you could, you didn't have to do the three hits anymore. You could just run away at any time. You could eat while you're running, which heals you. Um, it just, it wasn't the same. Hmm. So, yeah. It was, uh, from what I can recall, because I, I never played RuneScape, but obviously mm -hmm. being in, in that sort of same field, you hear a lot about stuff. Right. There were some some items that would sell for real money, like insane amounts oh, of real money. Oh, party hats? Yeah. They had like their seasonal items. And so during like Christmas, they had these uh, Christmas crackers. And then you Are could you just crack... call me? <laughs> Personal cracker. Uh, so... <laughs> yeah. So they had the Christmas crackers. And then when you cracked them, then you would get a party hat. And they had different colors and stuff. So they were super, super rare at one point. Um, if you could encounter a cracker that wasn't cracked, that was like unreal. Um, but the actual party hats, there were different levels of rare based on the color mm. they were. Um, now on RuneScape, I played a very, uh, very mean, I guess you could say, because <laughs> the people would try to transfer items from one account to another and they would do that by when you drop the item, it would take like 30 seconds or a minute before it would pop up for everybody else. So you True. had a little bit. So what they would do is they would find somewhere to stand. They'd go like, oh, let's go to the clothes shop, go upstairs, go to a corner, drop the stuff, log in on another account, yeah, go yeah. there and pick up the stuff. Like that's how you did it. Well, I I had an eye for knowing when someone was transferring. I just, <laughs> I was like, Ooh, they went upstairs on the clothes shop. I know exactly what they're doing. So I'd wait it out and then I would go upstairs and then I would stand on their new character and I'm click, 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 keep clicking on the ground and try to grab as much as their stuff as yeah, you could. Yeah. And there was a time I just cleaned up on party hats doing that. <laughs> it, was, it was thievery, but Hey, that's the game. That's the game, you know, game. <laughs> frustrating for the other person, but that's, that's the nature of the beast. Um, it was, and I've had people take my stuff when I've transferred too. So it's like, it, it, it was part of the game. <laughs> that's, that is rough. I changed my strategy to where I would do my transfers in, in the open. I would go to Varrock square, which was just where everybody was at. There was a bank there. Um, so I would just transfer right there at the bank where a crap ton of people were because nobody would expect to see items pop up there. They're like, no way would you transfer in front of everybody. That yeah. strategy kind of worked. <laughs> That's interesting because the, the one I'm going to say, let's just say there's a little bit of that involved possibly at times. Okay. Um, my number five, and we're going on to the, the Dreamcast and the GameCube here. Okay. Okay. Fantasy Star Online. Oh, okay. And uh, with Fantasy Star Online, uh, you would kill the mobs and they would drop. Mm -hmm. They would drop items. So sometimes it could become a bit of a fight as to who gets who gets the items. Because you'd have your, your, your green items. Right. And your green, your green items were the, um, the potions, mm -hmm. the healings, the monomates, trimates, uh, di dimates which would heal you. You'd also get your uh, antidotes and, and these sort of status effect ones as well. Mm -hmm. The brown ones would be weaponry and, and armors. Mm -hmm. And then you'd get your red ones and your red ones were special. So you, were, you were always looking for those, those special ones. So <clears throat> because this is, the this is the reason why Final Fantasy Star Online makes it, even though I'm not going with MMORPGs, mm -hmm. is because... When it came out, you could play the game completely offline. Oh. You could that play it online. Things. And you could play it offline. And and your character would stay the same. And everything right. that you earned on offline would stay. Okay. But you could choose to either go online and join lobbies and go into lobbies and go down into to worlds with groups of people. Uh, mm -hmm. or uh you could play offline. And uh, both of them had their advantages and disadvantages. Online, you could play, obviously, team up with more people. Mm -hmm. um, things would be tougher, but you're dealing more damage and you're getting more experience, so you sort right. of progressed quicker uh, okay. as a character there. And uh, you could do things quicker, which enables you to hopefully get some drops and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But when you're playing offline, there was little tricks that you could do. Mm -hmm. um, you'd have things called telepipes, and telepipes was when you'd taken a teleporter onto the planet, like this is a planet here on the screen, Right. You could use a, a telepipe 
and that would take you back up to the main transporter on the base. Mm -hmm. But your telepipe would then still stay active in the base, and then you could move into it, and then that would teleport you back down to the planet again. Oh. And that would be the circle of the telepipe, and the telepipe would be used up. Mm -hmm. So you would take a bunch of telepipes. I think you could have 10 on your, right. at one point. And uh, you'd get to the point in the map where a bunch of mobs would spawn. Let's just say the chicken-looking ones, which are the rappies. Mm -hmm. And you, they would have standard ones. So they'd all be yellow. Rappies would be yellow. Right. So what you'd do is you'd walk into the room. The rappies would spawn up. If they were all yellow, drop a telepipe. Zap mm -hmm. back up to the, uh, to the top. Then you'd go back into the telepipe and go back down. That would force yeah. the rappies to respawn. Mm -hmm. Every time the rappies respawned, there was a chance that a special rappy could respawn. Oh, so you and and these were on different mobs as well. Okay, so you would just offline repeat the trick until they'd st come up, and then the special rappy would be there. Then you killed the special rappy to get mm -hmm. the red, the special item, uh, and then you take the special item to the the uh, the person who would because it'd be question mark question mark question mark. Mm -hmm. You'd know what it was going to be. You're like, you knew it was, this is going to be a rappy cane, but you didn't know the stats on it because all the stats would be random. Right. You take it to the person who would say, oh, I think it's this. And then sh and he'd show the item and the stats on it. Uh -huh. And you could say, you could choose to go, no. Oh. And then try it, try again and see if it would do, you know, uh, an, on another one and see if it'd do better for you. But right. that's, that's, that's how you could you could play that on Final, uh, Final uh, Fantasy Star. Uh, <laughs> we keep, on, on, we keep calling Final everything Final Fantasy. <laughs> fantasy, fantasy is rune state, Final uh, Fantasy tactics. three houses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there were tricks, but I got I got hooked on that, and this was in the year two thousand. Right. And uh, let's just say we didn't have the ISPs like we do now. Right. Yep. So you'd be plugging your modem in. Uh, mm -hmm. to the phone line yeah and it'll be charging you per minute and i got i got in the year 2000 i i, I got a 770 quid phone bill i don't know how much quid is okay that would at that time that would be a phone bill of somewhere in the region of around i'm gonna say 1200 dollars and that's it. That oh day's money, not gosh. not even taking today into inflation into account. Wow! Because you had to attach it through a modem into the phone yeah. line. Oh, you didn't. Wow. You didn't have a. Oh, you pay X amount a month for. Yep. And th and it was just like, and I just bought a house at the time. Yeah. So I had the. I had like a little loan to fill. So I ended up having to pay that phone bill with my. My money to 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 buy shit for my house. Oh no! <laughs> Don't, who needs a couch anyway? Who needs yeah, a couch yeah, furniture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who needs carpets and beds and shit? <laughs> we just gotta we just gotta make sure that the uh, phone bill's paid and we can play video games. <laughs> so until until the I had to like stop and until yeah, I'm sure I just couldn't couldn't play it or I had to really <laughs> rein back my playtime. Mm -hmm. Um, or play offline, which was right. the the added bonus is then you could just play offline and yeah, and do plenty. But holy shit! But yeah, I I hammered that game and uh, nothing but great memories of the game. Great music, mm -hmm. great fun, great times, great grinding. V two uh, was was superb as well. So that was all wonder bar. Um, Big Rog Sorcerer for twenty seven months says once I replayed the most. Would be Tetris, Super Mario 3, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and Final Fantasy 7. Oh. That's Big Ross with a 27-month sorcerer. Sean Oliver with a five dollar says, I under uh, an underrated gem for me was Azur's Wrath. The Capcom beat them up for the PS3, Xbox 360, with some of the best QTEs and set pieces of all time. What do you think of QTEs? I hate them. Do you? I, I absolutely hate them. Um, yeah, I I can't I can't think of a single scenario where I would like a QTE where I'd prefer a QTE to be there. Okay, <laughs> I I'm sort of okay with QTE. Oh, okay. 
I think they got overdone for sure because everyone started to do them. Mm-hmm. But when they when they first came in, like in Shenmue, there was there's QTEs in Shenmue, for instance. Mm-hmm. They were they were an, there was just an interesting aspect to the game. But then everyone started to do QTE events. Right. There's a there, game. There is one game that has QTEs. It's actually a. I, at the time, I really liked it. I think it came out around two, two, 2013, and it was it was like Akuma. Uh, I get was it like called Akuma's Wrath or something like that? Uh, mm, Azura's Wrath or Azura's Wrath was that it? I think that was it. That had a lot of QTEs in it. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's the guy. That's what he mentioned in this. Okay. Uh, yeah, oh, super, so that's yeah. it. That's it. All right, there we go. I'm thinking now. I know what you mean. Uh, but yeah, that game is good. I. You know, as much as I don't like QTEs, I did like that game. Because Final Fantasy 16, which I'm playing at the minute, that's essentially got QTEs in. Mm-hmm. You got cinematic dodges, right. cinematic attacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have clashes that you got to hammer. You know, hammer the the square button with. And um, there's another game coming up on the list. Okay. Which has at times QTEs in it as well. Okay. So if they use sparingly. I'm okay. Yeah, I can I can tolerate it. I can tolerate it, but do I I never really prefer it, I guess you could say. Sure. Yeah. Uh War Wizard with a four-month sorcerer says number 10, uh, Akami, number nine, God of War, number eight, Azura's Wrath. Uh number Ooh. seven, Vigilante eight. Uh number six. <gasps> Vigilante eight um, is good. Sorry, Vigilante, yeah. Uh hold on, hold on. Eight second offense. Number six, Dante's Inferno. Number five, Final Fantasy 16. Wow. Oh. Uh, number four, Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Number three, Kingdoms of Amalur. Two, uh, Final Fantasy 10, uh, part one, uh, which is just Final Fantasy 10. Yep. Get you, though. Uh, and number one, Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. A lot of people's number one. I imagine mm-hmm. that would be. Yeah. Shark Denture with a five dollar. My Gen X list. Number one, Pong. Number two, Gen X list. <laughs> number one, Pong. Number two, Electronic Football. Number three, Oregon Trail. Number four, Asteroids. Wait. My list is supposed to be chronological, right? Or did I boomer? Sure. Jeffrey Hallam with a ten dollar. Sorry if it's already been mentioned, but I love that uh Battle Bits forgoes graphics in favor of gameplay. I'll never forget. I want to see more of that. Hmm? I want to see more of that. Like, just stop putting all this priority on graphics having to be perfect and focus on gameplay again. And there's something charming about, like, I, I feel like PS2, PS3 era graphics, especially PS2, that was already perfect. <laughs> you yeah, could, fine. Just you fine. could get yeah. creative. Live, it, it, it was realistic enough, but you could get creative with it and it had style to it. I like mm. that a lot more than just hyper-realistic. Yeah. One, again, one of my choices is going to exploit the playstation 4 system for something mm-hmm. uh, uh playstation 2 sorry system for something. okay um but yeah i i mean one of the games that i'm enjoying at the minute uh that i want to play more of is bolt gun warhammer bolt gun which is a uh, doom shooter mm-hmm. and it you know it looks like a doom shooter and but the gameplay is so good yeah and that's what that's what sets it apart and it's just like god i'd rather play this than Half yep. this stuff which is coming out from modern audience now. Exactly. Is... Yep. Gameplay, remember? Yep. It's good. <laughs> okay. Uh never forget Tomb Raider 2. Take that over a movie with prompts any day. Thanks for the fun stream. Thank you for watching. Um, Micro Omega with a bard for 24 months. Thank you. Fully problematic with a $20. This is a great mini game. Is the survival game from PS1 Driver? Lasting 38 seconds isn't that game is good. Lasting a minute is heroic. Great game to play with friends and laugh your bum off. Nice bucket grab butter and bacon forever. Yay, thank you. <laughs> Sky Freak with a 10 poll. says, quick summary of your pick so far. I just joined. Melanie, do you just want to quickly bring your okay. 10 to a 5? Okay, my quick summary so far. At 10 was SSX Tricky. 9 was Final Fantasy 10. Eight was Fire Emblem Three Houses. Seven was Shadow of the Colossus. Six it was Jack Two. And five was RuneScape, the OG RuneScape. Not old um, school RuneScape, the one before it, the first. <laughs> that's that's good. We hear it like that. It's like, damn, that's pretty good, actually. Uh, 
Number 10, Ico. Number 9, Tomb Raider 2. Number 8, Siphon Filter 2. Number 7, Shenmue. Number 6, Final Fantasy 10. And number 5, Fantasy Star Online. There you go. Quick summary for you. Jared Scott with a $10. Trails from Zero. or tra uh, Yeah, Trails from Zero may be my favorite. Best chemistry between characters I've ever seen. Fighting a bear-sized mafioso to protect a kid was the <laughs> best fist-pumping moment ever. Villains even included a cult. Yeah, they're called uh, Democrats. <laughs> um, discount Ron Swanson. I'm only kidding if you are. With a $10, I still love you. I don't mind. I don't even know what the fuck I am anymore, so don't even know. <laughs> Uh, number one, Kingsfield. Number two, The Ancient City. Number three, Baldur's Gate. Uh, no, sorry. Number one, Kingsgate 4, The Ancient City. Number two, Baldur's Gate. Number three, Oddworld Exodus. Nice. Number, uh, you jumped to number five then. Oddworld Abe's LDC. Number six, Ghost Recon. Number seven, Wipeout XL. Number eight, Demolition Derby, 95. Number nine, TW3, 10. Brain's going dead. TW3, Wait, what's TW3? TW3? I don't know. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Trigger warning three. <laughs> Tri yes, we'll go with that. Trigger warning three. And number 10, roll cage. Uh, best oh, the stream. Witcher three people are saying. The oh, Witcher there we three. go. That makes okay, sense. Okay, okay. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, best stream, much nostalgia. Thank you. Appreciate those kind words, man. Uh, and we have got, I mean, the chat... Literally, chat. I haven't even been able to keep up with you. Uh, we're <laughs> probably over 6,000, 7,000 comments that have come through the stream so far. So thank you so <laughs> much for uh, that hella interaction. Uh, War Wizard with a $5 says, how are contributions? Uh, mandatory. Uh, snort. <laughs> uh, but we haven't made enough for the, for the uh, celebratory bubble blow or the vest street, you know. Uh, celebratory bubble blow time. Yeah, as no, there you go. You see, no. Uh, hey, Melanie, just floating this out there, but I am available for the rest of my life. So <laughs> smooth, dude. Okay, smooth. I see. Hey, what are you doing for the rest of your life? Oh my god. <laughs> Two's news with a five dollars says never played. Wow. Uh, but I had the same addiction to Final Fantasy XI. Yeah, I was mm. heavily addicted to that as well, but I was playing on the Xbox 360, and let's just say, didn't quite have the power of a, of a PC. Uh, Arkham City Rules with a $2 says, Hey, Melanie, Tony Morrow here. Great show. Hi, Tony. Uh, D Watt with a $10 says, Pseudo Ken 2. I wish I have no doubt saying incorrectly, because uh, of my amazing Japanese. <laughs> Arkham City Rules with a $2 again says Mark of the Ninja is one of the best games ever. Tall, Dark, and Gruesome with a five pound says Last Ninja 2 on the Commodore 64 was my jam as a band. Most recently, it's obviously Witcher 3. Blood and Wine, especially as a highlight, which is one of the expansions, of course. Uh, the Happy Plague Doctor with the $2 says I've never completed a video game in my life. That's why you lose. <laughs> That's why you lose. Uh, Mirnum is 007 with a five dollar says in no particular order. That's the safe route. Spyro Year of the Dragon, Crash Bandicoot Warped, Spider Man on the PlayStation One, Twilight Princess, and Battle Arena Toshinden. I remember Battle Arena. Holy shit! Uh, Dunk Els Torque with a ten Danish thank you, and Mirnum 007 again with a ten dollar says ah five dollars sorry. Says, forgot to add Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 on the PS1. Oh, okay. It's goody, it's goody. Eve Barlow's Rotten Crotch with a 23-month sorcerer. Says, apparently, there's a new Pac-Man game out from the BBC. You play as a minor, and you have to dodge Hugh Edwards. <laughs> or someone while collecting pizza. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you get that, Melanie, but that's uh I don't know. That's a thing that's happening over here in the UK. One of the Oh one of the BBC's news presenters yeah. has been suspended. Oh my taken off television. Uh because he's been accused. I want to make sure I use my words carefully okay. here. 
of sending uh, a girl from the ages of 17 up into an adult when she was 20, but starting off at 17, uh, sending her money for her crack addiction, and she was sending him... You can probably guess. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and apparently he paid her over those three years somewhere in the region of allegedly, of course, £35,000. Oh my. Scandalous. Scandalous! <laughs> um... <laughs> BBC, keep BBC in, yeah? Never change. <laughs> uh, brr, Brandon Clark with a $2 says, Sea of Thieves, yo. I'm nearly on top of the super, so this is great. Nice. Uh, Martin with the mountain bike with the five bag nons, so we should have a nice, nice sail through the top four. Hopefully, the top three will be nice sail. Uh, Martin mm -hmm. with the mountain bike with the five bag nons. Forgot to add the best Spider Man game. I ever played Spider-Man Return of the Sinister Stick 6 on the SNES. Uh, amongst others, I forgot. Uh, asterisk, 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 asterisk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. We're okay with those, <laughs> those uh, caveats there. Andre Modelski with a 50 check says, Hey, as and Melanie, the one and only game I cried at was Final Fantasy VII. I think you can guess exactly when. I got a good idea. Yeah, I have an idea. Uh, it was at the end of disc one. I had a good, a good idea. <laughs> I wonder if that's going to happen in Rebirth. Mm. I have a, I have a suspicion where I think they're going to take this story. Okay. Because, of course, it deviates from the original right. Final Fantasy story now. Mm -hmm. uh, but I got a feeling they're going to do something. Uh, Kuya Kazuma with a $10 says, my top games are, I'm going to say in no particular order, uh, Resident Evil 2, 1998. Great choice. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 1, Witcher 3, Doom 2016, Mafia 1, Yakuza 0, Resident Evil 3, Nemesis, Red Dead Redemption 2. I sense a pattern. Fallout 4, Resident Evil 1 Remake, any other games you guys hyped for for the remainder of 2023? Alan Wake 2. Mm, you don't think that's going to be woke with the new... Strong black women introduction. <laughs> this, uh, see, this is this is this is what woke has done. It's poisoned all of us. In a game called Alan Wake, let's add this <sighs> other character here. Okay. Um, because she could be a good character, but we could in overshadow day. them though. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's what I'm it. thinking. We're living in current day, so it's like. Mm. Yep. But the first Alan Wake was so good. It was so good, and I'm. I, I have the collector's edition of it for the Xbox 360, still shrink wrapped, never mm -hmm. opened. Uh, I just, I really want it to be good. And if it's not, I'm going <laughs> to freak out. Yeah. Anything for you? I don't even, I can't even think of anything coming out right now that I'm excited for at the moment. Um, the last thing, I mean, I'm excited to get to some of my backlog stuff since. Uh, I have some catching up to do, but Final Fantasy 16, really excited to play that, and mm. uh, and the Resident Evil 4 remake. So uh, I'm going to get to those. Oh, man. Well, as somebody who's balls deep in Final Fantasy 16 at the minute, I think I'm about 80% finished on the main story, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more. It's been phenomenal. The, the story's That's what been I hear. Phenomenal. I hear it's so good. I'm excited. And the Resident Evil 4 remake is just it's yep. bueno. It's I bueno. There's too. stuff that's not in it. There's stuff which is gone. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not not from a woke standpoint. It's just not in. Right. Okay. Um, I imagine for the sake of flowing, flowing sake. Mm -hmm. But my God, it is, it is great gam. Nice. Great gam. Uh, Timothy Mouse with a ten dollar says, uh, I actually built a line voltage simulator so I could use my PC as a dial-up server. Fantasy Star Online 2 on Dreamcast. I think that would be Fantasy Star V2. Fantasy Star Online V2 on the Dreamcast. Since the broadband adapter was basically impossible to find. The broadband adapter... Now then, yeah, the broadband adapter was rocking horse shit. <laughs> 56k modem, which well, that's what I had. You could get those, but the broadband... Holy cow, that was rocking horse shit. 
Um, Steve with a $2. Thank you, Steve. Nikke with a $10 says, hey, as in Mac. Love you both. My top 10 are, I'm going to say again in no particular order. Final Fantasy VII, Sonic Adventure, Resident Evil 4 Remake. Ooh. Batman Arkham City, The Last of Us, The Witcher 3, God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2, God of War 2018, Sonic 3. Uh, Steve with a $5 says, Top 5. Number 1, Xenogears. Number 2, Final Fantasy 7. Number 3, uh, Secrets of Mana. Non Man of, uh, number 4, Mass Effect series. And number 5 is KOTOR. Good ones there, man. The Chevalier Delice with the five Canadians says, some of my all-time favorites, Legacy of Cain, Blood Omen. Genghis Khan, just as a person. Uh, Bloody Raw, Dragon Warrior 3, Ogre Battle, and my first MMO ever, City of Heroes. Oh. Nice mention for City of Heroes there. Fernando with a Sorcerer for Seven, the OG God of War trilogy, did QT's right. All big enemies had QT's to kill them, but you had to get their health low. And then they, mm -hmm. and they were not easy to fight. Correct. That's yeah. That's sort of like the same with Final Fantasy 16. You got to do a lot of the stuff apart from the Titan fight, which is crazy. Uh, radio, you'll get there. I ain't gonna gonna go there. Just trust me on this. <laughs> one. Um, radio Man one o one seven with five dollars says top ten. Uh, Gallagher Tekken EverQuest EverQuest. Nice mention. Spider Man two. Wow. Super Mario Galaxy, Arkham City, H1Z1, Conan Exiles, Mortal Kombat, Great Stream Guys, and Hi, Melanie. Hi. Uh, Amenti with a $10 says, feel like I've missed a lot of the stream, but I want to throw some money at you. Just getting introduced to Melanie now, Mac, but she Aww. seems like good people. She is good people. Thank you. Uh, Jump Man on the Commodore 64 is the GOAT. Uh, yes, yeah, subscribe to Melanie Mac. Uh, if the mods <laughs> drop the link in the chat, but subscribe Thank to Melanie Mac. Uh, Arkham City rules with a two dollar Zelda, uh, Link to the Past, Mark of the Ninja, COD 4, our God Tier, and Maester Mike. This catches up, man. This is amazing. Uh, with a ten dollar, says no particular order Twilight Princess, Metroid Prime 3, SSB Brawl, Bug Fables, Persona 3, Persona 3 getting remade, of course. No, is it Persona 2 that's getting remade or Persona 3? I don't know. <laughs> I need to check that. Um, I think it's Persona 2 that's getting remade. Um, uh, Persona 3, yeah. Nino Kunai. Oh, nice. I got the collector's edition of the second one. The World's End with you. Donkey Kong 64. Super Mario Galaxy 1. Xenoblade Chron Chronicles 1. And I dropped my pen. <laughs> Nice, right, that catches us up with uh, Super, so let's go, Melanie! All right, Number moving four. on. Number four for me is Smash Bros. Melee. Whoa, okay. Yeah, um, I feel like in terms of competitive games, this is the only one that I'm decent at. <laughs> that, okay, we get a group together and we're playing and having fun. I can hold my own a bit. So um, I've just poured so much time into that with my brothers. Um, we would stay up all night playing and uh, I'm, I'm a Pikachu main. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Smash Bros. Melee, you just Pikachu. can't go wrong with that. <laughs> no, I get I, I, I get it. It's got a... It's got a massive audience. It's uh, Super Smash Bros. The memes mm -hmm. are just the most amazing thing you're ever going to see in a life. Yep. <laughs> a new a new combatant has joined the fray and it's got <laughs> whatever the meme is uh, on that certain time. Um, I never got into it. I never got into it myself. I've really? never touched it. Not that I don't want to. It's just mm -hmm. I don't tend to gravitate particularly towards Nintendo really yeah i love i i i'm more in terms of like consoles i've, I've probably played a lot more playstation than anything mm -hmm. um but i do love nintendo and i feel like especially modern nintendo is still keeping gaming as actually gaming so there's yeah. they're they're helping with the current modern audience crap that we keep getting plagued with nintendo for the most part hasn't been infected with all that so mm. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean it's great. You can play like you can play a, a, a an Eastern game. Oh yeah, and it doesn't matter if the characters 
whatever they are, you know, female, male, black, right. white. The character is the main focus always with those with those studios. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's referring like three three one of the reasons why I like three houses is just it's just got great characters. Oh, amazing just across characters. the board. Uh, and and the stories and the and the you know the the escalation of it and everything. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I, I, I get that. I, I guess that's maybe why in more recent times I've sort of been moving a little bit towards Nintendo mm-hmm. in terms of um the switch and utilizing my switch a lot more and playing right. stuff like octopath traveler and oh that's a good game mm, really you know, good game and then uh the zeldas mm-hmm. the two zeldas which are just i, I want to play more zelda don't really think so the audience ha- is, is, is not the best to watch per se but that's what i feel with tears of the kingdom i've been playing that um but i don't know and for some reason i'm not quite as into it as i was breath of the wild i'm just struggling to connect with it as much i think because to me all the crafting stuff seems a bit gimmicky i i yeah, okay i think i would have enjoyed it more without it i mean the the first couple times or so that you get to utilize the crafting i was like oh yeah this is really fun but then now i'm starting to think it's a little i i, I think i would like it better without the crafting yeah mm, okay i can get that ironically enough with final fantasy 16 i'm i'm annoyed that they don't do too much for the crafting and they could do a lot oh, okay. more with the crafting. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it, yeah, no, I, I, I'm I really loving the game, but I think, I think uh, for my own benefit, I got to just play off off stream from now That's on. That's what I feel like I got to do with it too. I'm, I'm going to jump to something else. So, <laughs> but I try and yeah. try and bounce around with certain games. Like I need to finish, finish Final Fantasy 16. Don't worry, chat. We're going to finish Final Fantasy 16. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got only up. I did an only up stream, which was one of the funniest things I've done in a long nice. time. Nice. I want to try that. Oh, you got to do an only up stream. Okay. The audience are going to love it. Uh, they will be there for that. Trust me. It's it's okay. a full recommend. Go do it. Go do that. So, you know, so I, I want to play, you know, get in those fun games as well. I have my Sunday fun day every Sunday with QBG, X-Ray Girl, and uh, uh, Jane Theory, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get, you know, balance the, the videos where we predominantly talk about garbage. Right. Uh, with GAM, which is good because I love mm-hmm. GAM. Yeah. Uh, my number four is uh, a, a game that I don't want to be number four. Okay. Because it's so good. Ooh. And uh, it could be higher. Okay. But I look at the stuff that's above it and I'm just like, just so good. And, and uh, we're going dark. We're okay. going real dark here and we're going Silent Hill 2. Oh, that is a classic. Uh, Silent Hill 2, to me, is the the greatest uh, survival horror game ever created. Um, mm. Again, it, it this, we had a system upgrade. We had a PlayStation 1, Silent Hill, and the PS1, which is yep. phenomenal. But we had a system upgrade for the, for the sequel in the PlayStation 2. And uh, with, it, with it coming out, they utilized, like, in the PS1, they had to have a lot of fog because that was the limitations of the PlayStation 1. Right. In the, with the PlayStation 2 version, they used the fog as an entity in the game, as, as mm-hmm. a feature of Silent Hill. Yeah. So instead of just being this foggy screen, you now started to get this whispering fog around the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was purposely limiting how much you could see because yeah. that was adding to the, the tension and the, um, the apprehension in the game. Uh, and not only that is, is James Sutherland is is such a complex character and Mm -hmm. you know he gets this letter from his dead wife yep saying come meet me in silent hill and he's just like but you're dead (laughs) so he's he wants to to discover the mystery behind the letter and and his wife Mm -hmm. and of course he meets maria who's a dead ringer for his wife but personality wise different you know slightly different haircut She's dyed it, all these kind of things. So he confuses Maria with his wife. Mm-hmm. She's just, I'm not your wife, you know, I'm not your wife. <laughs> and we, we, and it, I mean, there is a remake coming out by Konami. Oh, yeah. Which I am I ho- not happy with. Yeah, uh, because it seems like they're modern audiencing it. Yes. They're saying yeah. that they've removed stuff because it's either too scary 
path uh, or because it's it's it was a product of its time modern audiencing piss off <laughs> i will give it a try right but i i have got no doubt that it is not going to be as good as the the, the playstation 2 oh, original yeah. i Personally. actually do have silent hill 2 in a plastic protector box Ooh. i have the, the collector in a, pla a plastic uh, collector box which is in really good condition still nice. uh, but the, i mean if you don't want to know the story ah! but um the, the wonderful thing about this game is because james arrives at silent hill mm -hmm. and there are other people there Right, and and we discover that the other people there are all there because they've done terrible things. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, there's reasons for some people to do it. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the the woman he comes across, she killed her father, but she killed her father because he was uh, abusive. Right, he was abusive to both her and and uh, her mother, and and she couldn't take the abuse anymore. Mm -hmm. So boom, uh, she ended up killing him. He's in her own private hell. Because Silent Hill, you see Silent Hill based off your perception of Silent Hill. Mm -hmm. So there are there are times where she sees flames, he doesn't see flames. She sees things he doesn't see because it's your own personal. Silent Hill is your own personal hell. Mm -hmm. And you you kind of get to a point in the game where you realize hey, all these people that we've met are, are they're not you know the nicest of people. Mm -hmm. Sure, they might have reasons, but they've resorted to murder, killing. All these different things. And you're like, why am I here? Yeah. Because if everyone's if everyone's not a nice person and I'm mm -hmm. here, am I not a nice person? <laughs> because you're coming across these these things, you know, these letters from his wife, or or sometimes Maria kind of morphs into his wife. Mm -hmm. She will speak as if she was his wife, and then she'll flip on a dime and be Maria again. And uh you, you you believe that they had this wonderful marriage and she got sick and James looked after her until she passed away and it's very mm -hmm. sad and very tragic and yeah you know is he is he here because um it's because he couldn't come to terms with the death why is he in Silent Hill what what does he need to exercise mm -hmm. and of course as the story the revelations come out James killed his wife he mm -hmm. she was ill she was terminally ill. And he killed her. The ambiguity is, did he kill her to put her out of her misery because she was mm -hmm. suffering? Right. Or, or did he kill her to put her out of his misery? Ooh. <laughs> and, and, and it kind of leaves that open for you to, to, to kind of interpret. Right. Uh, and so it, 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 that revelation towards the end sort of really throws things because this guy who's been going through all the shit with you, yep, all the stuff with Maria, which I won't go into in case you want to play the remake because that stuff is crazy. Um, Pyramid Head, of course, legendary, uh, yeah, iconic, iconic uh, character in video games as a whole. Mm -hmm. Now they, they even shoved them into the movie because that was terrifying. You ripped her skin off, yeah, 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 ripped her dress off, and you're like, oh, then he just rips the skin off. Like, oh, yep. <laughs> This was not the Bob I was looking for. <laughs> uh, and, and so, you know, you, you have all these great imagery, and but it ultimately boils down to he was there because he killed her. Yeah. And 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 uh, it's up to you to, to you know, he, he does leave Silent Hill because one of the things about Silent Hill is it takes you there to confront you. Mm -hmm. It takes you there to, to uh, atone. But you can atone. If you make it through Silent Hill, you, we'll release you. And as we saw with Harry in the first game and what that led to in the third game, because Harry is the guy in the chair in the third game uh, with Heather Mason and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, it, the story-wise, amazing. Uh, the, the atmosphere, everything. Yeah. The iconic uh, monsters. Uh, graphically at the time it was something unbelievable special and uh yeah it, I, I would love this to be higher but i'm looking at my top three and i'm like ah yeah it's tough once you get there once how you do get you get there how up? do you get there mm -hmm. um quickly jump with the chat as we go into the top three Woo! 
Um, oh my goodness me, you've been you've been busy, chat. Here we go. Rob Biller with a two dollar just because hasn't been mentioned. Parasite Eve. I actually have two copies of Parasite Parasite Eve two there, and I also because the first one never came out in the UK, it only came out in the West. I do have a Japanese import of Parasite Eve one, and down there in a plastic protector case is Parasite Eve third birthday which came out only on the PSP uh, with the uh, the little collectors, which comes with the book, the booklet, and it has all the nice stuff in the booklet. So Parasite Eve is an awesome. Again, a franchise I want to see brought back. Mm -hmm. Come on, Square. Square. Come on, Square. You'll put out a fucking pile of garbage like Avengers, but or come spoken. on. <laughs> or for spoken, yes, that both lost tens of millions for you. Can we do something with Parasite Eve, please? She's too sexy. She's too sexy. <laughs> no, that's it. She's too yep. sexy. She's yep. too sexy. And and uh, no, they'd have to blue hair her. <laughs> the Dead Jedi. Actually, it's square, so they might not. Mm. Would be nice and refreshing. The Dead Jedi with the $20 says, no list. Just wanted to throw uh, some bones at you and Ms. Mac. Love you both. Cheers. Thank you, Dead Jedi. Ben Dossier or Dossia with a five dollars says, "Why has nobody mentioned Mist?" Because we were waiting for you. <laughs> That's it. We we're waiting for you, Ben. We've been waiting here <laughs> your whole life. For this moment. Uh, Andrew Rob with a five dollar. No particular order. That's always a good way to caveat stuff. The Force Unleashed, Ratchet and Clank three, the OG Battlefront two, Jax two. Arkham City, Halo 3, Fallout 4, Star Fox 64. I love that. Uh, Mario Kart and Donkey Kong 64. It's good ones. All right. Andre Pires with a 10 Brazilian says Super Castlevania 4, Super Metroid, Xenoblade Chronicles, Legend of Grimlock uh, Grimrock 2, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Street Fighter 2, Shadow Dancer, Demon's Souls. Nice choices. Good choices. Uh, Two's News with a $5. This is my favorite all-time games are a tie between Legends of Zelda and Castlevania. Um, Kiru Kazuma with a $5. This is what do you guys think of Builder uh, games like uh, City Skyline 2? Looks great. One of my most hyped games with uh, Lies of P. And Lords of the Fallen. Ooh. Builder games? Sim games? I haven't really played a builder type game like that. Yeah, my, I'm not into them personally. My brother used to love them. My older brother used to... to mm -hmm. And he's not a gamer. But oh, he'd really? come back. Yeah, he'd come back from work. Mm -hmm. uh, he would decompress by going up and going into like city build, you know, sim, not sim city. Mm -hmm. The ones where you, you construct the cities, you know. Oh, okay. And he'd just be, he'd just be on there until right bed. So yeah, <laughs> All right. Uh, Dead Jedi with a five dollar says, and damn, Melanie's been standing for two hours. She can. Yeah, do I, I do this all day. <laughs> I want to get there. It's good. There. It, it yeah. helps. I mean, yeah, it's it's good for you. You're also just burning more calories throughout the day, so. Good. That is truth. <laughs> uh, Doug B with the $5 says, don't have a top 10, but two of my absolute favorites are Ultima Online and SWOTOR. Storylines are awesome. The story the storylines in SWOTOR were fantastic. I love them. Uh, Andrew Rob with the $5 says, wait, I want to change one of mine to Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, though I don't Ooh. know which game to swap out. <laughs> <laughs> the struggle. Yeah. My top 10 needed to be a top 50. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, you know, hence why leaving this open for more in the future. Yeah. Uh, Flay there, Flanley with a $5 says five. Uh, five, Last of Us Part 2. Fuck off. Four, Sonic 6. Three, Gollum. Two, <laughs> For Spoken. And number one, Superman 64. <laughs> Iconic list. Yes. Wow. Some of the greatest games ever made. <laughs> Nathan Cassidy with a $5. My list, 10 to 1. Shadow of War, Stardew Valley, Elden Ring, Hades, Pokemon Silver, 
Majesty, Witcher 3, Yakuza 0, Near Automata, Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Okay, it's going to be a lot of people's number one. Matthew Hammond with a $2 Smash Bros. Melee re-released with online and rollback. Base player 2011 iffy with a $2 says it was the dog as it was the dog all along. Sure. <laughs> uh, Warfire Zero with a $10. I really love Dead Str uh, Death Stranding. I saw Melanie interview Norman Reedus when it came out, was wondering what she thought of the game. Love you, Melanie. God bless. Thank you. I, I never played it because it's just not quite my style of game. I think with it being such a heavy focus on just the cinematic element of it. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. And people who have played it have told me, I don't think you're going to like it. I, I can okay. appreciate what it is, but I just don't think I'm going to like it with it being more of a walking simulator type. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've played a bit of it, a fair bit mm -hmm. of it, actually. I, okay. It is a game I want to go back and finish. Oh, okay. uh, I, I might I might do a members playthrough of Death Stranding. Mm -hmm. um, but I was actually quite surprised at how much I enjoyed it mm -hmm. uh, and how, I mean, Hideo Kojima is Hideo Kojima. Yeah. Uh, and, and everything that comes along with that, all the craziness and the beautifulness of it. And, and, this, and Death Stranding is definitely a Hideo Kojima game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and and yeah, I I just bizarrely really found myself enjoying it. Um, I do have a BB mm -hmm. that lights up as well. That's okay. the ba the baby in the jar, you know, yeah. the baby in the jar. <laughs> yeah, um, which was totally made so cosplayers could create you right. know Death Stranding to um, <laughs> characters, original characters, or cosplay characters. Mm -hmm. But it was, I was, yeah, it's just really surprised at how much I got into it, how much I enjoyed it. And it was, I don't know what came along that made me stop playing to move to the other thing because I would have just been, I think at the time it came out, I was just a streamer. That's all I did. Okay. Um, so I would like to return and, and, and finish that off. And I, yeah, I am I'm looking forward to the second one. I definitely want to finish mm -hmm. it before the second one comes out. Oh, cool. Uh, Philippe uh, Pavelka with a saucer for 10 months, but it's definitely not everybody's cup of tea. Mm -hmm. It is it is right. a walking simulator. Yeah. But it's a really beautiful walking simulator, and it's a little bit more than a walking simulator, but I, I, okay. Get, okay. I get why people would be like, nah, not for me. Mm -hmm. um, just don't tip over the... Don't tip over. <laughs> if you know, you know. Uh, Philippe Pavelka has been a sorcerer for 10 months. Age of Empire 2, so much nostalgia. The Chevalier de Lise with the five Canadian. Genghis Khan is a romance of the Three Kingdoms like game. I forgot Battletoads, Castlevania, and Mega Man games, plus a lot of the popular ones that you mentioned. Andre Modelski with a 50 check says two recent games I adore due to awesome music. Blasphemous. And this one is only, if you know what I mean, if you love Alan Wake, Control, Wink. Yeah, apparently there's, there's a meant to be connective tissue between mm -hmm. all of those sort of quantum dynamic games as well, isn't there? Yep. Um, Chess Dancer with a £20 says, number one, Red Dead Redemption. Number two, Divinity of Sin. Number three, Disco Elysium. Number four, Pillars of Eternity. Number five, Assassin's Creed. Six, Rome Total War. Seven, Formula One for the PS1. Number eight, Final Fantasy Twelve Zodiac Age. Nice. Number nine, Tekken 3. Number 10, Resident Evil on the PS1. And Arkham City rules with a $2 as ESPN. NFL 2K5 is the greatest sports game, period. Brian Lara Cricket, PlayStation 1. Loved it. Uh, Meloni! Your number three. I am so excited to be a top three right now. This is where it's, it's intense. Um, Getting real. Number three for me, I got to go with Devil May Cry 3. Oh, love. you're going to love Final Fantasy 16. Really? They did the combat. I thought, yeah, I hear that. So it's just like people are just people have been telling me that. So it's like, OK, if it if it feels similar enough, I'm going to be a huge fan of that. Yeah, thing. It, they uh, made the combat and it's good. Yes. OK, that makes me excited. But yeah, I mean, Devil May Cry 3 really just 
everything about it. Um, I, I love, love, love the soundtrack. I feel like it is the best soundtrack in gaming history is Devil May Cry 3. Um, I still use Devil May Cry 3 songs for my uh, stream alerts even. <laughs> um, I mean that Dante, Virgil, you know, rivalry there, epic. Um, this is where we were introduced to Lady uh, in the game and she is is my favorite character in Devil May Cry. So just epic boss fights, huge challenge. You felt accomplished when you beat the game. Mm. Definitely top, or yeah, definitely there. Definitely deserves that third spot for me. And, um, but I think even with Capcom's just on point, they've just been on point. So even with like Devil May Cry 5, phenomenal. So good. So... Yeah, yeah, I, I, I hear like I've only played the first two Devil May Cry games. Oh, three is what really put it on the map, though, because it's <laughs> like, it, it's like okay, the first two they were fun, but they were flawed. But three, legendary, legendary experience. I, I, I really, I th after playing Final Fantasy sixteen, and people are going, you really need to play Devil May Cry. Oh yeah, I mean, at because least play five, at least yeah. because you know, since that that is a newer one, so the stream is going to probably be more into it, um, viewers as a whole. But uh, five was just fantastic. I feel like it, it's right there, just right behind three. So so good. But I mean, mm. it would be ideal if you played three first, just because so you can get more introduced to Virgil and all that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because that's going to, yeah, the sto story wise, it's going to make the story a lot better for you if you played three first. Um, I don't even think you have to play any other ones before that. Just play three and, and five. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And you're good. And I mean, then you had like that DMC spinoff from Team Ninja or whatever that was super controversial. Now, when I first played that, because I am a Devil May Cry fan, I hated it because I was like, oh my goodness, this is just crapping on everything uh great about devil may cry and they ruined the characters all this and i kind of had that mindset of it but then i learned to just separate it and say okay don't pretend like dmc is actually devil may cry pretend like it is something completely different and i actually really enjoy the game when i look at it at that angle but hmm. yeah <laughs> i know it's it's kind of an unpopular opinion to like that game as a devil may cry fan but if you just separate it it is a really good game. I've I've replayed that game many times and I feel like I'm due for another playthrough of it. But you just can't beat actual Devil May Cry though. Devil May Cry 3 and Devil May Cry 5 especially. But okay. especially especially DMC3. Yeah, I did I did hear good things about 5 though and I was sort of like ah, oh, I, I wish I wish good. I had more connection to the series cuz Yeah, you would I, I think... mean just play 3 and 5. That's all you have to play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you might just have to do that. I have gone number three. Okay. <sighs> oh, Skyrim. Okay. We I... had to go with the Elder Scrolls V. Skyrim. I get it. I get it. That's. Uh, yeah. I can remember with great clarity the day this released. Um, I wasn't a YouTuber at the time. I was working a nine to five. Right. And I had booked off Friday, the 11th of the 11th, 2011 <laughs> from work. I had the weekend and I booked the whole of the next week off. So I now had, uh, nine, 10 days of solid rimming of the sky. Mm -hmm. And in the morning, uh, I got up early I walked to the uh, shopping center. Mm -hmm. um, I was living in Huddersfield at the time. Mm -hmm. And I walked to the shopping center. I went uh, to the game, game store. Right. Uh, which I pre-ordered the collector's edition on the Xbox 360 of Skyrim. Mm -hmm. I picked up my collector's edition. I went to the cafe. I sat right. down, had myself a coffee, picked it up. Walked home. I remember everything so clearly. Nice. A bunch of school kids were on the way to school because this was because I think you could pick it up at eight thirty in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I was walking back home, and some kids kids are walking walking my way, and one of the kids just went, 
Oh my god, he's got the collector's edition of Skyrim! Oh. And I just went, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then went home and I was a slob for 10 days as all I did was nice. play Skyrim, eat pizza, sleep when I passed Man, out. Man, that sounds epic. I... Those are some of the best memories whenever you just oh, have yeah. a few days or so just to be a bum yeah. and play games, eat junk food, and bum it up for a few days. That is good times. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I was sponsored by Papa John's for that week. Uh, <laughs> I just didn't want to leave, you know? I did. Yeah. I just wanted to get up, play, and then, and then you know, sc scoff as I'm playing and then just go to, not even go to sleep. Yeah. yeah, I was literally just waiting till I passed out. Right. Hang on, I think a couple, maybe more. I'm just saying a couple. But I think a lot of the time I just slept on my sofa. Yep. Just like that, you know, with the control on the floor, just with a blanket over me, you know. Wake up. <laughs> oh, you know. Xbox on. We're off again. <laughs> um, but this is, I mean, I, I, I want to do, because uh, I have the PC capacity for it now. Mm -hmm. I want to get a, a, a modded Skyrim to the nines and i'd really love to play a, a modded skyrim because we're probably four years away mm -hmm. maybe more from elder scrolls 6 um but i love the fantasy just fantasy games in general i love mm -hmm. and and just having the ability to do anything and morrowind yeah. is what made me fall in love with the the elder scrolls series uh, and just uh, everything that you can do go anywhere once you got over that initial opening bit, do what you want. Yeah, yeah. Go where you want. Do the story. <laughs> don't do the story. Go off, right. explore, do this, do that. And and games that gave you that that freedom and that capacity to do that. The music oh, yeah. as ever is is just stunning. The world looked at the time just absolutely unreal. Mm -hmm. I have actually, I have one of the craziest videos mm -hmm. that I ever did. Which I can actually bring up. Here we go. I can actually bring up on this stream. Right. Nice. This, is, this is uh now this isn't the original playthrough. Okay. This is this is a playthrough that I was doing uh years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, I'm gignormous in this video. And uh the camera work is superb. Mm -hmm. Uh look at the positioning of that camera. <laughs> All the headspace. Yeah, that is <laughs> Wow, I really wanted to show off that corner of the room. <laughs> but uh, this, uh, uh, tell me if the volume's on, but this is, uh, this is, this is, don't mess with the chickens in Skyrim. Okay. Kill the chicken. Oh, 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 there is a chicken I can burn, isn't there? Oh, shit. Oh, no, it's the dog. I'm not going to kill the dog. There's the chicken. <laughs> no! No! Oh no! I don't want to fight! Oh, he's mad! You killed his I chicken! Fuck. I just fuck. <laughs> I didn't mean to fuck your chicken! I'm Jesus! <laughs> it's just a chicken! It's just a fucking chicken, dude! It's just a fucking chicken. Let it go. My dad has chickens. Let it go. He'd be doing this if fucking someone hurt one of his chickens I got... too. <laughs> now I've even got an emote now in my chat. It's a chicken because this this is Fuck what started off. It's all the amazing. chicken, all the chicken drama. I it wasn't love missed. It, it was fucking this. wife. <laughs> fucking oh oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> Jesus Christ! This guy's fucking nuts. He's nuts about a chicken. Go back home. Go home. You oh, he crazy is. Fuck. Wow. He is not going to gonna let it go. He's not going to give up. It's crazy. What He's a boss. Crazy. Go home. You're a fucking mentalist. <laughs> oh, you're a, good. There's a wolf. Hope it fucking kills you. Get fucked. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Now the wolf's after me. <laughs> I will eat your babies. Oh my <laughs> god! Now what's attacking me? Dude! I 
just killed a fucking chicken! <laughs> I didn't fuck your mum! <laughs> that is the last chicken fucking chicken fuck I fuck. God damn. Imperial <laughs> fucks. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, it's just a chicken! <laughs> I got wolves! I've got Imperial soldiers. I've got a crazy fucking blacksmith. You started something with that. I know, just because I wanted some fucking chicken. Then <laughs> it crashed. It crashed! <laughs> no! I'm waiting for you to get swatted and... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Open up! <laughs> wow. wow! Wow! Oh my goodness! <laughs> I got fucked over by the chicken rights people. They DDoSed me. <laughs> the chicken rights Peter. people fucking DDoSed me. Peter's like, game. no, I don't think so. Not on my watch. Yeah. DDoSed my game and fucked me up. Not today, Satan. <laughs> <laughs> you really shouldn't have killed that chicken. Today, I'm going to answer the question. Wow, of... that's amazing. Then I did the night that other video there. That was the I'm going to play Titanfall with a Titanfall pilot's helmet on. <laughs> Spoiler alert: you can't see anything. Oh no! That was a fun PvP fight. I ended up. I did get two kills. Believe it or really? not. Really? Anyway. Ah. Wow. Just sprayed and prayed. Sprayed and played. <laughs> uh, Reet. Uh, where do we get to on the chit chat? Okay, Rebecca McGulligan uh, with a $5 says, have you guys ever played Champions of Norrith? And Champions Return to Arm. It was a fun multiplayer uh, PS2 game. Yes. I did play Champions of Norrith. Uh, yes. Beat that with my brothers. We loved it. It was great. So it was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to play it with my mates, and it was a ton of fun. I used to play uh, Monster Hunter as well together. Nice. And that was another ton of fun. Uh, Ian so forth, gifting five memberships to the stream. Thank you, Ian. Butter Biscuit with a five says, as sounds like you say cuties when you say QTEs. <laughs> really, real fast, cuties. Uh, thought you were talking about cuties before I realized what you were saying. No, I, I have unsubscribed from Netflix. Uh, Sports Nugget with a ten dollars says no order, but probably Ocarina of Time, Persona Five, uh, To the Moon, Super Mario Galaxy, Dungeon Defenders, uh, Steam World, Dig Two, Portal Two, Metroid Dread, Spider Man PS Four, Toy Story Two. There you go. Oh. Dave Grimes with a two euro says a cool game on the PlayStation Two was called Primal. Oh, my that, that was an underrated game. I agree. I got, I, I, they had that girl with like the, the emo no. looking girl with like uh, the dark eye uh, makeup. Oh, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. a very dark, like uh, emo y type game. I think I know what you mean now. Mine is Zircon with a $5 says, What's pineappling as? Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9 are classics. I love them all. Yeah. Who should Ryu Cat with a twenty dollars? Says as I just finished Mission Impossible Seven on an IMAX and yelled at Tom for two and a half hours, saying "Sit down." <laughs> he wouldn't listen. Mel Tomb Raider was my second game for PlayStation. Ooh. Lara got me into Traversal Games, which is why both Mirror's Edge uh, get a mention. Love it. In so forth with a ten pounds. Thank you, Ian. Says when I killed a chicken in Skyrim. All the guards in the city dispatched me efficiently. <laughs> yeah, if I was in a city, I would have been screwed. I was lucky I was in a town in the middle of the night. Uh, Tedder has been a bard for 14 months. Meloni, you're number two. Hey. Oh, number two, I would have to go with Splinter Cell. And I'm going to say... Pandora tomorrow, even though technically Chaos Theory is a better game, but that's just what I have the best memories was playing Pandora tomorrow. So I'm going to go okay. with that one specifically. But um, 
you know, old school, original Splinter Cell, to me, the most fun um, stealth game ever. I, I absolutely adore Sam Fisher as a character. Mm -hmm. Um love the gameplay, the objectives, the way it's like, hey, you know, you can play it your own way in a way, but, um, but hey, you know, it's still like, you still have your main objective, but there's different approaches that you can take toward it. Loved that. And what was so fun about, like, when I think about Pandora tomorrow was the spies versus mercs as well. And back in the day, man, these games would be jam packed with stuff it wasn't mm. like now we're oh, okay we're gonna we're gonna sell some dlc we're gonna do this uh. we're gonna do that it was like you got not only an incredible base game but you also had this the spies versus mercs as well which was which would be a whole other separate expansion at this point so yeah i mean to me when it comes to stealth games you just don't get better than classic splinter cell and I, I'm I'm very nervous about what Ubisoft's going to be doing with it, with the remake and Ugh. all that. Especially since when they put like a job post on it, there was some sort of modern audience mention in it. Uh, you know, Grimm's daughter, she's a redhead, so it's not safe for her. She, she's she's black now. She's going to be black now, I'm sure. <laughs> Even though I mean, the game already had Lambert, who was black, and he was a boss, so it was like it, it organically had. He's gay. Yeah, it just organically had that there with him. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I I love me some Splinter Cell. I would I I and and the thing is though is Michael Ironside has to be Sam Fisher for me to really like. I Splinter don't Cell I don't think he is. I don't think he is. If they don't bring him back, then I'm not playing it. I just don't see how I'm gonna want to play it if they don't bring him back. Now with Blacklist, there was there was he had his own health issues going on, and that's why, and he didn't want them to tell people why. So, uh, even with Blacklist, even though with it being a good game, I just couldn't, I couldn't get into it because I'm like, Hey, Sam Fisher, like Michael Ironside is Sam Fisher. Mm -hmm. And if Michael Ironside cannot come back as Sam Fisher, then it's time to have a new splinter cell on the line there because you can't keep going on with Sam Fisher's legacy without Michael Ironside. He is the character, not only just his voice completely embodying him, but Michael Ironside was very passionate about, um, the games and the character and he had a lot of input uh in sam fisher's character and the dialogue and all that so yeah you gotta have michael ironside i don't think he is that's i mean i mean to me uh, it's, i don't know it's though such... because they did bring him back for like the uh one of the ghost recon crossovers so i still have a little hope but if if they're retarded enough not to have him in the in this with the remakes of the remake well it's like a remake of i don't know exactly how they're doing it it's like they're combining the three games into one or something or doing their own spin so it's not it's not going to be like a one for one remake um or anything like that um but yeah no michael ironside i don't know if i'm going to be able to play it <laughs> mm. uh yeah i mean i i would hope so um but i i am so black pill to western developers at the moment yeah um Everything is just modern audience, my feminism, yep. my, my inclusion and diversity. And it's all coming at the cost exactly. of good storytelling and good characterization. Mm -hmm. uh, every company's trying it in the West. Yep. The Last of Us 2 is just the epitome of, of ESG shit. Mm -hmm. um, and just the infestation of the left wing in, into video games. Yep. And what used to just be fun is now... Mm -hmm. so we'll uh, fingers crossed um i'm going east for my number two okay but very mainstream because it's resident evil 4 all right that's good so now, so you're going with like the original resident evil 4 or the remake well this is the remake picture right okay but we're talking about resident evil 4 the original Gotcha. Uh, the remake was was superb, but you wouldn't have had that remake if you didn't if Resident Evil Four wasn't just the greatest Resident Evil game mm -hmm. there ever was uh, on the PlayStation Two. As you just mentioned about Splinter Cell, there was just so you used to get so much right bang for your buck with these you games. Did. You'd finish them, you get extra costumes, you would unlock mercenaries, you'd unlock all these different modes, mm -hmm. and uh, and that just felt so rewarding for replay value. 
right. speed runs, new weapons becoming available to to facilitate speed runs, mm-hmm. uh, or stick it, or just playing a new game plus, staying with your with what you had at the end of the game, going into a new game with all of this, make which making you more powerful, yeah. so you can again smash through and all this mm-hmm. great stuff. And they they did do that on the remake as well. They did allow that to happen on the mm-hmm. remake as well. Um, but Resident Evil Four, uh, the the Resident Evil series is is my second favorite series behind Final Fantasy series. Right. Uh, and it is just as, as a, all of it, because it's just so consistent from one. It's great. To I, where I it is really, now. I really wanted to put a Resident Evil game on my top 10 so bad because I do love, love Resident Evil. But with everything else on the list, I was like, I, I can't do it. I got to have another top 10. I can't, I, I can't right, take yeah. it. I take, can't take off anything else that I had on there. Yeah, yeah. No, I, <laughs> I get it. Like I said, there was multiple caveats. If I put one mm-hmm. from a series, that that had to be it, regardless of how I felt yeah. about the others. Yep. Um, and the, you know, I purposely didn't put in certain genres because of yeah, what this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so yeah, to to to, and the remake was freaking amazing, absolutely amazing. I can't amazing. wait to play the remake. It looks like they really did a good job with it. Love, love, love how the the Leon Kennedy design and everything. They still captured that like emo side of him that he had in resident evil 4 because i was like well wait a minute is he going to be exactly like he was in resident evil 2 remake are they just going to go with that exactly but i love that they hmm. that they did give him that more edge that well he i had mean in resident 4. evil 2 is one of my favorite games of all time the remake i thought was the remake's superb. good i really really loved good. the remake yeah and uh oh i've got my one in six og costume resident evil claire and leon coming uh, next week mm-hmm. um but yeah with resident evil in the remake leon is is less quippy quippy with the one-liners okay but it's brilliant he's he's the he's actually a really nice develop uh, a growth character from resident evil 2 remake mm-hmm. and they physically have That's made it. him look more like leon from resident evil 4 i well. like that yeah his, his they, design yeah. in 4 was just perfect yeah so great um and uh yeah uh, i was gonna call her heather for a second then no we're not talking about uh uh <laughs> silent hill uh ashley. ashley ashley is uh yeah they tweak a couple of her lines mm-hmm. they, they don't make her as overtly thirsty right but she's subtly thirsty now okay <laughs> which is actually is really cool you know yeah. it kind of it kind yeah. of fits her personality a little bit more because right. she's scared frightened a bit timid and and she's mm-hmm. had to, she's going to go to all this shit yeah. so when you get when you get these little brief moments you know this she, she puts in some little subtle thirst you know hey we could you could we you know i could become a member we could do things together and, <laughs> and at the end when she's just like in the, in the original she's like hey do you want to come back to my place sort right. of thing and it's just yeah. like sorry ashley yeah i got did to do uh, in this one, she's just like, I could, uh, you know, have you assigned my detail? <laughs> you know, it's just like a nice little right. subtle, I, I yeah. would really like you to stay around. Uh, sort of thing. So, and, and actually, they, they kind of do a lot more with her in this one as well. And it, she's okay. really she's really good. Um, that's cool. But the, the, that's the great thing about the Resident Evil games. The women are strong and they don't, oh, yeah. it doesn't have to come at the sacrifice of their beauty or their femininity. Exactly. Uh, regardless of whether it's Jill, Claire, a- I mean, Ada's just uh, uh, Ada's just the thirsty as the thirst traps for me. But, <laughs> I love her. She's, uh, she's awesome. But these are, you know, these are great characters. Oh, they are. And, uh, yeah. and God, Wes, me, you need to learn from this sort of stuff. That's like the, the biggest reason why I love Resident Evil is the characters are incredible. Just so good. And they have their own voices. Everyone has their own voice. Mm-hmm. Like Claire doesn't feel like Jill, and Jill doesn't feel yep. like Ada, and Ada doesn't feel like Ashley. Mm-hmm. You know, they they are they very much have their own voices, and it's same with the guys. Leon is, uh, you know, you could say Leon or Chris. They're similar in what they do, but they're very different in personality. I'm a Chris fan of between uh, those two. I'm a Chris fan. Leon and Ada for life. For me. <laughs> you know, that's it. When yeah. when I when I played Resident Evil two. Because when I played one, I always played it from the perspective of Jill. I never played it from the perspective of Chris. Right. Initially, you know, I played mm-hmm. later, but yeah. I always wanted to play from the perspective of Jill. Yeah. Um, and then Resident Evil 2, I play from the perspective of Leon, mm-hmm. even though I think canonically you should play from the perspective of Claire first. Yeah. I think that's how canonically it's meant to go. 
But um, yeah, regardless, that's you know that's just it's just by the by. The characters are so well done, individual voices, and I loves it. Very good. Loves it. Oh my goodness me! Right before we go to the numero unos. Oh. Um. Uh. Chris Taki S with a five Australian says Halo Collect Edition. Uh, not Collect Edition. Was it Collect Halo? Collection. Is it the collection? Is it? Which have one? <laughs> the one that they did uh, is oh, uh, overall number one for me. Uh, being eight years old, first person shoot had an exciting future. Dead Space, Zelda, uh, Mass Effect. Oh no, not Mass Effect. Shadow of Mordor, uh, Ragnarok Online. I felt your fifty-six uh, kilograms. It was fifty-six pounds. <laughs> uh as an aussie yeah you know dumping it dumping it through the world and coming up your way uh arkham city rules with the two dollars is be honest cinematic games like uncharted suck i don't think they suck at all um but i think i think there's um an over reliance yeah on, I think, on cinematic than there is gameplay i think they're overdone i think during yeah. the time that uncharted first came out there was room for it because it, you didn't see it all the time. And uh, so it was fun then because it's like, okay, here's something to kind of break you away from like your, your normal traditional hmm. gaming experiences. But now because they are so overdone and that's most everything coming out of the West, then yeah, I, I think it's trash now. But if it was just sprinkled in here and there, I would be a lot more about it. Yeah, I, I have to agree. Uh, Michael Tyner with a $25 says, what a lovely couples. Hello, Melanie. <laughs> Hi. MB, how you doing, Michael? Good to see you, buddy. MB Mephisto with a two pound says the remake will probably be called Splint Incel. <laughs> Splint Incel. Okay. It will. And they'll be a, he'll be after a group of YouTubers. Yeah, that'll be it. <laughs> Just like the Batman. YouTuber Batman. His daughter is Sarah, she's gonna be black. And she's going to take over. Yeah. And his wife's, still gonna be, everything. his wife's going to be Asian. He's, <laughs> his daughter's going to be black. <laughs> and, and we're going to go, this, I'm a little bit confused. And then you go, that's because you're racist. And I go, oh. That's it. That's you know, how it works. What's funny Yay. is there was, there was once a time years ago, I thought, well, you know, if they're not going to continue Michael Ironside, Sam Fisher, maybe they can, he can retire and Sarah could be a splinter cell. But I, after everything that's modern audience and mm. how they treat female characters, I wouldn't trust it. I would not no. trust them to do it right. So I absolutely, yeah. once upon a time, I absolutely would. Yeah. N nowadays, not, no not on your life. Would not, not on your trust life. It now. No, no. way. Mm-hmm. She'd be gay. She'd be lesbian, of course. Oh, of course she would. Yep. <laughs> um, she she would hate all men. Yep. All the men would be and she'd be incompetent. perfect out the gate. She would just she'd be way better than her dad was, and she just there'd be no learning curve. She would just be no, amazing. You'd have to take skills away from yeah. her because <laughs> she's so good. Yep. <laughs> uh, Michael Tyner with a twenty-seven dollars says Bloodborne, Sekiro, Nia are my favorites. Good choices. Uh, Son of the Red Fox with the two dollars is lovely on an A to two, but Chris punches boulders. He, yes, he does. Exactly, he does punch boulders. <laughs> so I'm a fan. That's the stupidest thing I've ever done in the game. I still love it. I will defend <laughs> that boulder punch with my life. I, yeah, Resident Evil Five. Chris is is best. Chris, uh, even though I do think that Village Chris was really good, really good. Um, yeah, I like I like Village Chris. Mm-hmm. Village people, Chris, is what I think for us in Evil Five. <laughs> uh, Chris Taki S with the two dollars Australian says Halo Combat Evolved CE. Of course, Combat Evolved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, first Halo and a 56k internet. Amen. Right, Melanie, your number one. Which two Raider is it? This is going to be a massive surprise to you. Oh, wow. Okay, are you ready for it? Tomb Raider 1. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go with the original Tomb Raider. Um, it, the reason why, and I feel like any everything after Tomb Raider 1, it was, it, even though the classics are more or less very similar, but it did change a lot after Tomb Raider 1 because Tomb Raider 1 
was so focused on the adventure. I feel like mm -hmm. the entire game was just such an adventure. And you had the story, you had the conflict with Natla, all that kind of stuff, which was good. But what I liked about it was that the cutscenes were put in there as like a reward after a while. They, they weren't sure. overwhelmed with them. Um, but the good thing about Tomb Raider and what you have with, with the whole premise of it is that the adventure is the story. So the gameplay itself is telling such a massive part of the story. But mm -hmm. it was just the perfect balance. We're introduced to Lara Croft. And right at the start, you know, she's offered money to, to locate the ski on. And she's like, no, nah, I don't. It's not about the money for me. It's about the sport. You know, I only play for sports, she says. Um, yeah. The thrill yeah. of it, just right out the gate, you're, you're getting that uh, attitude from Lara. But she was she she was edgy and she had attitude, but she also was like bubbly and fun. You could tell like she just enjoyed it. She enjoyed the thrill of all of that. Um, I feel like it was the perfect balance between that exploration combat um and puzzles so it wasn't super combat focused so whenever it was no. combat focused it was more so against creatures yeah. um things like that it wasn't just oh let's focus on just human combat um and i just the acrobatics that played a role in that the traversal and a lot of people will complain about the controls that sort of thing but when you change the controls so drastically, and as they've done with like Tomb Raider Anniversary, for example, which I will always consider far inferior to the original, because when you go with that auto grab and all that, you take away such a huge element of the gameplay. And that was the traversal. It was the, okay, you're looking at where you need to navigate to and you're preparing in your head. It's like a, it's yeah, like yeah, math. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like I'm math. Jump, you have to, do, a side do I need to do back? a running jump yeah, or do yeah, I need to do yeah. a, you know? Is this this part of the? This is going to make me slide a little bit, so I have to be able to do that. This is going to. I'm going to have to grab the ledge to reach this. Um, just so much that went into the traversal of it, and so whenever you do take away um how, the mechanics of how that worked, uh, and you do go with the auto grab and all that, you're severely babying down the gameplay as a result. Um, so that the puzzles were good. I feel like when it comes to a perfect game, Tomb Raider 1 is perfect. I can't think of any flaws in it. It is absolutely perfect. There's no segments that like, oh, this is frustrating. I, I, I want to get past this part, which some of the other classic games do have some of those moments. But Tomb Raider 1 was just start to finish perfection. Great amount of challenge, um, but without being a masochistic like, <laughs> like Tomb Raider 3 um oh yeah and perfectly paced I just love everything about it no I mean yeah I fully get it I mean the reason why Tomb Raider 2 is on my list is because mm -hmm. I think Tomb Raider 2 took everything with Halo 1 and right you know just went right let's just get this tight tight like Tiger and and um yeah it just it, it's yeah. one of those what we don't get today is where they take something and uh, they add to it and it actually does, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it does, looking for the brain's gone dead. It, it, uh, well, it just adds to the game, right. essentially. It, yeah. just, it, just make, it does it legitimately make it better. Um, it did, Tomb Raider 2 did instead make of making it, it larger. Cluttered. Yeah, it did make it bigger. And so there, um, for a ton of people, they do like, like Tomb Raider 2 uh, as their favorite of the classics. I can see why. Um, but for me, what makes Tomb Raider one, the best is just mostly like the atmosphere of it and everything and how it does feel, it feels more like an adventure. Um, so yeah, yeah there's different, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I miss those, I miss those sort of adventure games as well. I miss mm -hmm. those games where you feel as if you are on an adventure, right? Uh, because yep. the adventure games that we have now feel like you're too much in a film. Exactly. I, I, I don't yeah. want to feel. I want to feel like I'm there. And you mentioned something which I think is really poignant, and that mm -hmm. and that's that. Uh, once upon a time, we used to get cutscenes as a reward. Yes, that was our reward for doing all the gameplay and and sorting this out and solving this and jumping that and doing that. Mm -hmm. And then you go, hey, here's a little thirty seconds. Sometimes even less. Here's just a little cutscene. Right. You're like. Oh, we got a VMF. You know, you Ooh, earned it. Yeah, yep, I, you earned it. Now it's just. And then you can go and walk for 10 meters before you get yep. another. 
everyone wants something for nothing now. And they don't understand that when you got to work hard for something and to earn something and suffer a little bit, you enjoy it more. So when you mm. earn that cutscene, when you've had to retry this segment of the game over and over and you finally get past it and then you get the cutscene, it's like dopamine city. Yeah. It's like, yes, I worked for this. I earned this. <laughs> no, I, 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 I fully get it. I fully, I mean, you know, uh, Lara's just iconic. There's no mm -hmm. other way about it. She's an iconic character that's being mis mismanaged and mishandled by morons. And yep, uh, exactly. It, it's so bizarre that <laughs> these companies are in, uh, they have these incredible properties at their disposal. Yep. And it's not rocket science how to turn that into money. And mm -hmm. yet they, they make it brain surgery rocket science. They do. Because they have to play different shitty games. And this is why you'll always fail and why stuff won't sell anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, because the modern audience is something you have fabricated in your mind. Yep. And it doesn't exist. The modern audience psych is the old audience. Oh, yeah. That I mean, is what the audience at, is. It hasn't at, changed drastically. Yep. Look at Halloween time girls who are dressing as Lara Croft and compare girls dressing as classic Lara to current Lara. It is way more dressing up as classic Lara than current Lara. Yeah. And that's saying a lot Turquoise for how top, old the franchise shorts, is. Yep. You know, khaki the holsters, shorts, the the top, dual pistols. Holsters, heavy yep. socks, heavy boots. Yep. So I don't want to hear it with the whole, oh, well, we had to make her more friendly for a female audience. No, the female audience is like the old ones better. There was even... Idus Interactive said that there was a 40% player base for the first game. That there, there's no way it's even close to that now. <laughs> no, um, women uh are, are just as vested in the power fantasy as men are. Yep. And uh and women like to play beautiful women as well. They like to play exactly. independent uh mm -hmm. just characters in general, but uh a, a take charge, confident uh, yep. character that doesn't have to come at the detriment of other characters. Mm -hmm. it just has to be the traits that this one is but women love the power fantasy just we as much do. as men do yep just like mm -hmm. some women love to play the damsel like having that damsel right. like having the, the man take the charge and be oh, and, and uh, like, yeah that's always nice because i mean yeah these yeah. aren't sexist or misogynistic or, or chauvinistic ideals it's, it's right it's preference you know i like to take charge with a female in real life at times and sometimes I like, you know, I like her to, 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 right. it's called yeah. give and take, it's called, you know, give and take. <laughs> uh, well, my number one is just as shocking as your number one, Ooh. as, uh, as my number one, uh, surprise, surprise, everyone's already got it. <laughs> there you go. Is The Witcher 3, the greatest game ever made, ever, game. of all time, ever made. Um, a game which uh, which not just is is a fantastic story with fantastic characters and well acted, but a story that doesn't sacrifice your gameplay. Right. Uh, just an astounding amount of gameplay in this. And yes, when you get to your cinematics, it it sort of enhances it. The cinematics aren't bloated; they don't mm. go on for too long. Yep. Uh, they don't dominate the story. Um, yeah, and, and they've just put, you have so much agency in this and control about what you want to do, where you want to go, characters that you interact with, what you can do with those characters. Uh, to me, this is, this is primo Witcher. Uh, I, I'm of the belief you can have source material versus, um, popularization. Mm -hmm. I am of the belief that the Witcher as a series only became popularized because of the games. Right. Um, the, the books and the source material, nothing wrong, but that isn't what made the character popular. CD Projekt Red took that source material uh, and they created these uh, f uh, three games which uh, appear after the books. Uh, and they created, with those characters, their own lore, they created their own dynamics between them. And what is a beautiful thing, of course, you making the decision about which mm -hmm. pathways you want to tread. Um, you know, does Geralt because of the because of the gin in the books and the way that the gin put Yennefer and and Geralt together was that fate or was that magic? You can make these mm -hmm. decisions in The Witcher Three when you you know and all the there were some excellent things, excellent storylines you can partake in or not. 
Yeah. And if you don't partake in them, then yes, it will have repercussions, but it will have repercussions because you made a specific decision. Go meet me here. No. Ain't gonna. Then the next time you see them, well, thank you for not, you know, thank you for leaving me and, or, uh, you know, sorry about not turning up or oh, whatever. You know, I love having that choice. And this game is, is, the, is the daddy of choice. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we have Geralt, who's fucking Captain Alpha with, with, uh, to the nth degree. But you have Yen, you got Triss, you got Siri, and they're all amazing. Again, individual characters with their individual voices. Strong women. Actual that, strong women. <laughs> actual strong women that are not that aren't neutered uh, mm -hmm. in in their looks mm -hmm. uh, or their personality or their femininity or their vulnerabilities, uh, their strengths um, married together with all of those strengths and weaknesses. That's what makes character. Um, so yeah, and the world. I mean, CD Projekt Red created one of the greatest worlds I've ever seen. Oh yeah, uh, I've ever been part of. So. Um, the Witcher remake, the first game remake that's coming. Uh, uh, when don't know. At some point, hopefully before I die. Uh, <laughs> but now we have an ESG laden CD Project Red. Yeah. Um, that is fully committed to ESG. So I'm not holding out uh, too many hopes for that. I think The Witcher Three not only is the greatest game, but is possibly the last greatest game. And that where I'll go with that. <laughs> um, right, I've taken up a lot of your time. Let's just smash the rest of the supers, which ain't many because we're on top of things now. And then we <laughs> shall depart because this has been the quickest this was three plus hours of my life, i got to say. This was an amazing stream. Like, I, I really it. enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> nice to, to geek out about stuff that you love and can be gushing. It is. And yeah, this was so refreshing. I needed it. So this was great. Like we said, there's top 10 favorite. <laughs> uh, there's plenty of room for more. There's more uh, top things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Tiss with a $5 says, Melanie, having acquired the bucket, uh, could you ever see yourself ending up with a 26-year-old guy? Just ask me <laughs> for a friend. Boy boy. We'll see, I guess. <laughs> but that is that yeah. is quite a bit younger than me. I am 36. Kristaki <laughs> uh, S with a five Australian says the reason Melanie Knight's Tomb Raider one is the same reason I adore Star Wars Shadows of the Empire on the N64. Great stream. Correct on the name, by the way, as. Oh, nice. Thank you. We are caught up. Chat. Yay! Thank you so much. Melanie, before we depart, is there anything that you would like to plug before we go? Um, yeah, just follow me on my YouTube channel at Melanie Mac Go Boom. That's where I do like my nerdy commentary type videos. Um, and then I've been streaming on Kick lately uh, at Melanie Mac, but I'm going to try to multi stream and stream on YouTube as well, but on mm. my old channel, uh, Melanie Mac. So. That's it. <laughs> uh, it's been, um, I've loved it. I lo absolutely adored this. It's been great. Uh, this was awesome. Love video games. I've loved video games since the 80s, for goodness sake. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's something that stayed with me all my life. That's why I've been wanting to get back into more gaming. Yeah. Um, recently and sort of, you know, the videos will come uh, as they have been. Yep. But, you know, I, I also need that balance and I need that, um, that it's good important. time. It's Mm. It is important because we do cover a lot of topics that are, uh, you know, th we care. You know, it's because we care that we want to talk about these things, yes. but it can bring us down after a while. We do need those, like, pick-me-up stuff. And this was that for me. <laughs> All right, this, is, this was a tonic. This was 100% yes. a tonic uh, that I needed. Mm. There are so many great games, and this is the tenuous top 10 favorite games of all time. Just like yes. the next time we do this, it'll be the top our top 10 favorite games of all time. <laughs> yeah. Just not with these top 10 in it, and we'll find another top 10. Exactly. Um, because uh, there's just so much out there. There's so many things I wanted to put in here that I couldn't put in here. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, some people say, why isn't you've played The Last of Us as? You love The Last of Us. Why isn't The Last of Us in here? I could say The Last of Us isn't in here because there was a part two. Right. And the part two, to me, now diminishes the part one. 
uh, as a game. So even though the first one is an amazing game and I love the, the game, now that we have the additional story, um, it ruins the first game. It just right. absolutely ruins it. And that does have an effect on how you perceive a game. Mm -hmm. um so yes so what would have easily have made my top 10 video games of all time uh, yep. now doesn't uh because part two ruined everything and that's again mm -hmm. what happens when some woke fucktard gets hold of uh <laughs> gets hold of well hennig uh hennig no longer involved and it shows mm -hmm. you who the actual writing talent was yep uh in that group of people uh clearly wasn't uh neil cockman <laughs> um andre Badelski with a 20 check says there's always time for another top 10 stream well Yay. i mean if, if melanie's up for it oh yeah 100 percent. i think uh we pay it forward and we do we do it on your channel next mm -hmm. yeah that'd be great uh mr tickle trunk with the two canadians says please don't wait six months to do this again <laughs> all right no worries <laughs> <laughs> we'll try uh but you i mean We've been over two thousand, about two thousand five hundred viewers for the whole stream. Oh yeah, um, that's awesome. Which has been amazing to talk video games, and it's been amazing to yeah to see how many comments have come through, how many people are talking about, how many people are talking about their favorite games, mm -hmm. um, and just how much gaming means to people and how much it means sure. to us. Yeah, um, you know, we get all these. I mean, I've shit on the right, left a couple of times. Let me just shit on the right. Uh, the mm -hmm. right don't understand this. They don't, under, they don't You're understand right. video games at all. They don't understand pop culture. They don't understand why these stories are meaningful. But I would yeah. argue these video games are important because the the story of mankind are stories. We that's what we've been doing all our life from the first mm -hmm. drawings in a cave. Yep. These are modern day cave yep. paintings. That's what this is. We mm -hmm. we are as a, as a as a species. Um, you know determined to, to tell stories to tell future generations our yep. our story and and this is what video games are to me and mm -hmm. uh, matthew hammond two dollars is more as in mac when when Stay we tuned. can do it yeah <laughs> <laughs> when we can yes uh massive thank you to every single one of you who came to watch tonight uh mods thank you so much indeed for giving up your time every one of you who super chatted Membered, remembered, gifted memberships. Thank you so much indeed for your support. We'll be back and go subscribe to Melanie Yay. and Matt. Go boom. Yes. Uh, we'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now. Goodbye, boo.